episode of Dragon's Greed Gaming. I am your host, Great Unclean One, and I am here with a new group of buddies as we delve into uh, the alien role-playing game from everyone's favorite sci-fi uh, franchise. I am running as the DM today, so I am Lee Hack, very good group of friends around the digital table, uh, which is also something different we're doing as uh, the coronavirus is rampaging through the country. We are meeting online and uh, adhering to that great social distancing. So without further ado, uh, around the digital table, first we have uh, my very best friend in all the land, Tyler, who I have known for many, many moons. He is taking control of our pilot, whose name is Singleton, if I recall. Singleton, the pilot. All right. Reckless. <laughs> Toy dinosaur. <laughs> Buddies with Mac were. Anything you'd like to say to the audience here, buddy? Um, no, I'm super excited to play the game. I know we've been waiting for a long time for it to come out, and... Uh, Seems like they did a really good job with the book and all the uh, extra stuff they made for it. And uh, looking forward to diving into it. Yeah, the book is gorgeous. Uh, great job, uh, Free League. Definitely one of the most enjoyable pleasure reading. And very simple rules thus far, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, and I figured how to delete the scribbles on the map. Good man. Good man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> life goals. Uh, next, we have another... And who are you controlling today, my friend? Your mic cut out. Who are you addressing? Matt. Matt. Oh, it's me. Hey, hey. Uh, I am playing Janice McWhir, the administration officer. You're my buddy. And we are buddies. Me and the pilot are buddies. We're both to the end. You're my accountability buddy. That's right. <laughs> that episode was on today. So I, I will guide you <laughs> in how to, how to fly the ship into the ground. We'll all die together. Nice. Uh, then we have, uh, yet again, Will. And Will, you are in charge of? I am Sonny Sig, and I am the science officer uh, in this ragtag party. And uh, I seem like an all-around great guy. Uh, everybody gets along with me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I feel like I'm really going to lead this party into uh, some great hijinks. And uh, we're all going to get out of here safe. And uh, just be another, another day in space. Wonderful. And last but certainly not least, uh, another another long long term. Uh, my Ian, and today you are in control of Holroyd. Holroyd is a, a heavily tattooed roughneck, kind of no nonsense type of guy. Wonderful, wonderful. But with that being said, we are going to delve straight in. Uh, today we are doing the one shot adventure from the core rulebook called Hope's Last Stand which uh, takes place on the colony from the second film, Aliens, called Hadley's Hope. Or Hadley's Hope. I don't know, how, how would you pronounce that, Brian? I would go Hadley's. I think Hadley's it's Hadley's Hope. in okay. canon, if All I remember right. from the audiobooks. Well, we can have people rage in the comments later. So, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Facebook page and got lots of... Uh, be that it is May, we are here back on LV-426, where... Uh, Ripley and the rest of the Marines encounter the Xenomorph Hive and all hell breaks loose. So, um, without further ado... Does this take place before, after, or during the events of the movie? This is before. This basically how the colony... I'm going to get some music started here. Okay, so bear with us, uh, audience and listeners. This is our first time playing, and uh, despite being all heavy, heavy role players... You know, we might have to stumble through some rules here, but uh, we're going to have a, hopefully a good time tonight and see if this uh, group of jabronis can escape the, uh, the colony. <laughs> Hadley's Hope is a shake-and-bake colony located on the moon LV-426. Established in 2157, the colony is a terraforming, research, and mining facility and a new home to its pioneers. By 2179, there are 158 colonists there, and the first natives of LV-426 have been born. The giant processors are changing the atmosphere, now breathable, but still choked by dense clouds and racked by electrical storms. The sky is always gloomy. Sorry, uh, the sky is always gloomy, more like night than day. Even when the sun is above the horizon, it's often hidden behind the giant form of Calpamos, LV-426 parent planet. 
Some said building the colony was unwise. The moon hadn't even been mapped in 2157, the weather would make life a constant struggle, and the violent geology made it all feel as if the world didn't want anyone there at all. Yet someone at Wayland yutani allocated the budget and gave the green light, and so Hadley's hope was founded. Supervisor Al Simpson got stuck into the job, and the colonists soon learned to live with LV-426's quirks. It wasn't long before they were making a success of this most unlikely of colonies. Okay, and with that, Hadley's Hope, jointly funded by the Wayland yutani and the United Americas, has a them-and-us feel to it, with any visiting corporate folk looking down their noses at the colony's laborers. Despite this, the colony has been developing well. There's opportunity aplenty, and risk aplenty as well. Four days ago, a wildcatter named Russ Jordan, uh, for those of you who don't know, that is Newt's father. Yeah. You can see the cool footage, footage in the extended edition. Oh my god. Back, infected with something. He died, and some snake-like parasite disappeared into the guts of the base. Security has had no luck catching the thing, and somehow more people were infected. Rumor has it that some of them have died, and that there are more of these snake things than Supervisor Simpson is admitting to. Simpson spoke over the intercoms, calling for calm. Crisis or not, you have a job to do. 24 hours ago, you headed out on a maintenance run to Processor 9, happy to leave the base until this crisis blows over. 10 kilometers out, Singleton's tractor gave up the ghost. A nasty mechanical crunch told you it wasn't going any further. Calls back to the colony got a cursory response. You were told to wait, and they'd get to your little problem when they had the time. While you waited, you got to talking about the crisis and the Wayland yutani corporate shuttle that had arrived right before you left. The shuttle carried an inspection team led by company agent Miranda Reynolds and her chief scientist Theodora Kamiski. Sig relayed something he overheard, a hushed conversation about the shuttle being quickly and quietly readied for departure. Reynolds and Comiskey are likely the only two who can authorize its use, and the only two with the access keycards needed to use it. For all you know, it was Reynolds who ordered Jordan out there in the first place. It's not right for the Wayland yutani reps to just skip out and leave you, the workers, to clean up this bloody mess. If things go bad, why shouldn't you get those keycards and get away instead? A day has passed, and you've still heard nothing. All further attempt to contact Hadley's Hope has been fruitless. No one is coming to help. The only communications you pick up are garbled, pa garbled, panicked even. There's no option but to walk back and see what the hell is going on. Um, and so with that, you guys leave the tractor and head back to the colony on foot. And uh, it takes you a couple hours but you do eventually uh, get back to the base. And um, as usual, uh, dark clouds are overhead. Really not a thing such as sunlight, so to speak, out here. Um, the base is dark and dreary looking, and a light rain is uh, is been coming down pretty much uh, constantly. And you guys make your way to the west airlock, which is on the far left side of the map um, oh, yeah. I see it. just below the air traffic control tower yes so you guys are over there um, now you guys have access to the full map here because you guys are all people that work and live on the colony so you know the layout so feel free to look at the map uh, if you want to try to chart your way around um, you guys you know you guys know where to go and, and how to get there for the most part so uh, you guys arrive at the west uh, airlock um, very weary from your long walk, and uh, as you guys enter, you can hear a distant voice talking over the intercom. Uh, it's obscured by static, but you can make out the following message, and the message is as follows. This is an emergency message. All colonists must immediately assemble at the main storeroom on the sublevel for safety. Everything seems eerily quiet. Uh, what do you all do? Where yeah. is the storage unit on the map? Far left. It says west storage, or it says west it's lock by the storage. Where we put all our guys there. Uh... Oh, oh. So we have to place 
the tolls it go to. How nice. This guy over here with you guys. Okay. So, who's that guy? That's the that's the other character. That What's is that? uh that's Hirsch. Yes, that is Morgan Hirsch. He is a ex Marine. Um older guy with a bit of a gray beard. Not too old, he's only thirty nine. But he's yeah. got um yeah. well, he's starting he's starting to gray a little yeah. bit. And uh he's um basically a cleaner on the base. Um, and I don't mean like an assassin or a hitman. I mean, he just basically just a janitor. Um, and, uh, he does not get along with McWhir at all. Um, she seems to like to boss him around and like never let him forget that he is the boss. Um, he doesn't really care for Singleton that much either. Uh, but he does get along with Sig pretty well. Um, doesn't really seem to have an opinion one way or another about Holroyd. And, uh, you know, he's got a cross necklace that he always wears, and he definitely is a bit of a religious guy. Um, and he is currently carrying a cutting torch, which is one of his tools that he usually uses on the job. Does the voice sound like Mother, or does it sound like um, one of these Wayland hotshots that just landed? Uh, let us see. Matt, what's your character's profession again? What do you do? I am the administrator of the office. Oh. Gorman. The Colonial Administration Union Organizer, to be more precise. I, I noticed, by the way, that when we were out there, nobody said, you've blown the main transaxle. <laughs> yeah. uh, Will, to answer your question, it is, uh, it is a mother-type recording. It is an automated recording that would be uh, set to play in the case of an emergency. And, well, it looks uh, like know, there's an access terminal just down the, the, the hallway here. I'm going to go see if uh, I can get any information from that. Okay. Um, so as you guys... Oh, and one last thing I, I forgot to uh, to point out, because um, it is not a secret. Holroyd is actually uh, the android on the base. I knew that because his name rhymes with him. Oh, uh, Mofo, so that's not a secret? It is not a secret. Oh. A secret. So in, in this game... Um, if, if you have an android character, and if they are secret, uh, they use regular stats like a human, and they roll for stress like a human. But androids actually can have stats above and beyond what a human can have. Uh, Holroyd is not a secret android by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and he, because of that, you get to use his full android stats. So your stats are, you know, some of your stats are a little bit higher than the rest of the party. And you also do not have to worry about things like food or air. Um, or stress. Stress is a big one. You don't use the yeah. stress mechanics. Um, however, um, that means you can never actually have those bonus dice from stress either, but you'll never suffer from panic. Um, and you can be a bit harder to hurt because uh, you're an android. It's, it takes a lot to totally yeah. shut you down. And Holroyd's resilient as well, so he's, All right. he's like, yeah. All right, tin can, front and center. <laughs> Damn, dude, yeah, just get a whole uh, party of yeah. androids and just fucking roll face. <laughs> Sounds like the, the power group. Um, <laughs> so, let's march their way through. <laughs> yeah, because I, uh, yeah, I was kind of stressing that because I was like, man, how am I going to how am I gonna roll? How am I going to fake roll? So you guys don't cotton on the fact that I'm an android. Yeah, when you're when you're secret, you just you roll. Oh, wow, guys, I'm so them. stressed. Aren't you guys stressed, too? Yeah, I'm so yeah. stressed. I, I picked up a stress for that, didn't I? Yeah, when you're when you're an android, you just don't roll those extra dice, and you would you would make stress rolls as normal. Uh, All right. So you, you basically pretend to be a human until. Well, Holroyd is a pretty no nonsense individual as well. I mean, he's kind of known for getting stuff done. He, he never grumbles, as you, you would probably expect from an android. But uh, <laughs> you're just like uh, constantly uh, <clears throat> wiping your brow, but you're not actually wiping. You're actually sponging it. And you're like, oh man, I am perspiring so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So he's he's quite cool to take this on his shoulders and lead the charge down the way. So we're going down this main this main tunnel that's heading east, I guess here. Yeah. So um, so you guys uh, the commercial offices. Yeah, yeah. So you you ask the um you ask the android to uh to Do go first. Do we see anyone else? No. Uh, it is it is eerily quiet. Of course, um, there does not seem to be really anything uh anything else going on here um 
grab a dice here to mark you guys off on my map. Where is the? Uh, where, where, they wanted us to go. To I would. I would like to. Uh, I would like to access the access terminal and do a Comtech skill and see. Uh, oh, you got Comtech skill. See where everybody well, is. Oh yeah, I don't know what I could actually do with it. I don't have. All right. Well, well, here's what we'll do, guys. Just to keep things moving, we don't have everybody trying to step over each other's uh, toes. Um, we're just going to use the order of your character portraits on the bottom of uh, the screen as our initiative order right. until All we right. have to do initiative. Um, so we'll just go left to right, starting with Brian, and then until something else interrupts that. So, uh, Hall, right, that makes sense. You are asked to go first, and it sounds like you do start walking down the hall. Yeah. Um, as you do, um, the message that is repeating, it repeats a couple times, and then there is a... It just is cut off by this screech of like this electronic screech um and uh will and tyler when you guys go up to the intercom uh i'm sorry you're using the, the the computer terminal but there's intercom right next to it too when you try to use the intercom it's totally dead um there is no sound and it does not turn on in any way um and after several steps down the hall uh brian um you guys here uh, silence is split by a single gunshot yeah. and a lonesome scream that echoes from it seems everywhere. You can't tell where it's coming from, uh, perhaps from the ventilation ducts or somewhere further in the base. Um, but you hear that and everything goes silent. And that unnerves everybody, so everyone, except for the android, gains a point of stress. Boom, right off the bat, has some stress. Hell yeah. I got this, guys. So, uh, just real quick, um, where was that uh, directing us to gather on this on the map? Uh, the sub level, sub, sub level, something or another. Yeah. So basically, the uh, the basement where like the vehicle bay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. We're minus one here in the bottom right. Yes. Yeah, I see it. And if you guys would like, it's easier to record stuff like that if you just click on your little circle. And you can see three boxes above it. You'd like stress, health, and whatever. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's up to you guys if you want to use it on that or if you want to use it on your character sheet. Either way is... Uh, Put mine on the character sheet. It's pretty handy. It's fine. Can I uh, stressfully try and activate this uh, uh, console? <laughs> See what's going on? Yes. Yeah, so go ahead and give me a, uh, a com tech chest. Yeah, test. Um, and uh, this is on page 69 of the rulebook. So you can see any stunts you can do if you roll extra successes. Giggity. So right. that's only one success and no stress. Okay. Um, you attempt to log into the uh, the computer, and um, there does not seem to be any response. It appears that uh, power does not seem to be working to this particular terminal. Just like always, maintenance isn't doing their job. <laughs> Yeah, cause this is just like in my lab. I mean, I, do, I, I come here to do this work, and I just don't get the support tools that I need. Um, the situation figured out those guys. Oh, they're gonna get a talking to. Does my motion tracker still work? In the in the narrative text, it made it sound like it went foo bar. What uh, what page is that on? Uh, this for, I'm sorry, they. On your character sheet, I think it's. I gave you a page number for the motion tracker. Oh, 133. Which one do you have? The M314? Yes. Okay. A motion scanning device. The M314 uses high-powered ultrasonic waves to detect movement within its sensor range. Uh, long range in close quarters, so you can basically... Um, you can see up to about four, four zones away, so from where you are, you can pretty much track... I would say everything except the extreme right-hand side of the base, the, uh, the east side. No, I was I was saying, does it does it still work? It sounded like from the narrative text it got broke or something like that. But no, your your I tractor was... broke down that you guys were driving. Ah, aha. Motion All right, well, I I'm gonna whip that bad boy out and see if I can pick up anything uh, in the direction of where the screams came from. Okay. Or the single the singular scream, and I'm gonna start just kind of slowly walking towards the um you know towards the where I am on the map here towards the the turn around the corner. 
Okay, so you will need to make a uh, supply, I'm sorry, a power supply roll. Power supply roll. Every time you use that, and I am just trying to figure out how you do that. Alright, um, let's see here. Here we go, supply. Uh, 86. So you roll a number of dice equal to the supply rating up to a maximum of six. Uh, for every one you roll, supply is decreased by one. If it reaches zero, then it's out. So I believe it has, what, supply four or five? It has... Supply five. Okay. So... Five dice. All right, here we go. Oh, sorry. I'll do it in the... In the app. You can just roll your base. You don't have to use the app if you don't want to. All right. All right. I got uh, two sixes. So that's... Uh, you need to get at least one, right? For this thing... To make these things work? Correct. Okay. Well, I guess not in this case. It's just rolling to see if you run out of supply or not. Because, I mean, it works based on whether or not there is uh, something moving around or not. Um, okay. Okay. You see... Um, there is some motion on the section labeled as E1 and E2. Um, obviously, you guys can't tell if it's what level it's on. Um, uh -huh. But there's something in there near the... Um, yeah, somewhere in, in E1 and E2, you see some movement. And... Uh, all right. Let's see if there's anything else. And then... Guys, I'm picking up some movement from block E1. Maybe E2. I can't tell what floor it's on. And then uh, just north of you guys, where you see it says Billy's Bar above section oh, yeah. C1. Oh, shit. I'm also picking up something from Billy's Bar. <laughs> uh, and I believe that is it. Uh, I'll tell you if there's anything else. Um, you guys can discuss what you're going to do while you debate that. Uh, Billy's Bar or E1, E2, that's, so those are labs. Cheap well, plus medical office as well. Bi well, Billy's Bar is a bar, mm -hmm. I imagine. Yes, it is. Is there relative, like, uh, is there more movement that we can see in one of the other? No. Um, you know, just going off, it's it's hard to tell if it's uh, more than, than one dot. You know, especially indoors, these things aren't always that uh, that accurate. And obviously, you guys have older equipment that's not top of the line. So, um, there's definitely something moving. But other than that, eh, hard to tell. Well, the bar's closer. I don't know. Do you guys want to see if we can yeah, see if there's any survivors or anyone at all around? Yeah, I say we start there, take a look. Uh, and then move down the main corridor towards the uh, medical lab. Oh, I see that my administration office is just down the ladder and moving right now. I want to check if my people are okay. You would. Oh, uh, well, again, I'm not picking up anything, any movement from anywhere else in the colony, so. Well, you guys have basically two choices. You can continue down the hall towards the east, uh, where, uh, where Halroyd is standing, and kind of make your way into the base, or there is a ladder uh, right where Hallroyd is standing that leads down to the uh, second floor. So you guys can do one of those two. Oh, I'm sorry, I should say it goes up. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, because those like white dotted areas are actually underneath the main corridors. Yes. So we, we would have to go yeah. up to get to the bar anyway. We'd have to go to the second level, get to the bar anyway, right? Um, no, the bar has entrances on uh, on both levels. Uh, plus, there's ladders in in there that go up and down. Gotcha. Um, so, oh, I I see what you're saying, um, Brian. Those are to get to the bar. We have to don't we have to go through this? Yeah. Is we'd have to go if you watch where my marker is going. We have to yeah. go down this way. And then we have to go through here. Is this a tunnel area? And then through block one and then through here? Is that how we get to it? I think like, that, I think this here, uh, I don't know how to make that ping. How do you make that ping? Well, that oh, there we go. Left mouse button. See that there? I think that's not actually a passageway. I think that's underneath 
Right. The passageway on level two. Um, then, I think that yeah. that ladder, this ladder is the same one that goes down to the lower level, and it's between the vehicle unloading area and the shower rooms. See, they're okay. sitting there. So if we want, yeah. we can go down, because that's where we're supposed to go, right? Yeah. And in order to leave yeah. this section, we have to go down a floor. So, I mean, we can go down there, because we have to go to... Or you said it was the mass the housing area we have to go to? Sorry, Chris, I... I forgot the announcement. Where does it want us yeah, to go? Yeah, it was telling us to go down. It said go down to, like, yeah, where the mass housing, the, the, the south, southmost area. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, if we go down this ladder, that's just around the corner, past the shower rooms. But we're not picking up, we're picking up any movement from there, probably not. I think we should go, the bar well, is close. It, keep, keep in mind that the lower level is directly below everything, so, um, the motion tracker that, uh, seeing on the section of E1 and E2 could very well be in the basement level oh, as right. well in like the vehicle bay. That could be the vehicle bay or maintenance offices below us in the basement. Well, Sig uh, is going to nervously uh, pull out, he has like a multi-tool like a little Leatherman multi-tool it's a bit rusted with age and he's going to like start thumbing it like to kind of calm himself down and he's going to just do that until he feels more at ease with this because he, he did his hear a gunshot. Is that your signature item? Yeah, it's my trusty signature item. Okay, so you can get rid of your one stress point. Yeah, so you've definitely had enough time sitting here debating to uh, yeah. try to catch your nerves. It is creepy. It is um, it is deathly silent other than the rain uh, hitting the windows um, and, you know, the like just kind of general hum of the uh, the base itself. Um, but yeah, it is it is freaky. I think Holroyd, Holroyd uh, definitely feels that we should go to the med lab first and then work our way down. Um, well, let's put it this way. Uh, Matt, you are the officer. You yeah. technically um, can try to... Well, you do have a talent that allows you to try to order people around. Um, although anyone can use the command role to try to issue an order to somebody. But Matt's talent specifically can make him where he can issue an order and force somebody to do something. Obviously, uh, if you abuse that, you probably won't have friends for too long. Um, so I technically, Matt, if you want to try to take charge of the situation and make a decision, you can tell everyone's kind of got opinions of what they should do here. And uh, it's it's a weird situation and you're, you're, you're worried. You're definitely worried about where everybody is and what the hell's going on. Well, based on what I'm seeing, the med lab's actually pretty far from us. We'd have to go through a bunch of different sections to get there. That's that's far. Yeah, true. So we, we can't go to the med lab right now. Um, the floor on right now, the only thing of real interest is block C1, which doesn't seem to really be a whole lot of stuff here. Well, let me so, wager you this, McWhir. If we go to the where they're telling us to meet up and find your people there, then you know, we've solved your problem. And that was in the lower C2 section, wasn't it? It's in the very lower level of the basement. Yeah, uh, it's, the problem it's is I'm not picking up anything moving. Level. I got a feeling we're the only ones here, guys. Well, I mean, if they were, if we we're told to assemble there and rally there and just, you know, chill and wait for further instructions, they're probably just sitting on their beds so the motion track wouldn't pick them up. I mean, we'd have to go down on the floor to get to the housing anyway, so... Well, then let's make our way down there. What makes the most sense is to go down on the floor, check out the administrator's office, it's my office, look, see if my people are okay, and get my shit. Your people would have gone to the rally point. Why? I hope they did, because they've been trained to do that. That's what I told them to do. I'm so make we them doing their job, to the right? rally point, because that's what we've been told to do. Well, let's Obviously. go. And that involves going through the administration office. So let's no, go. No, it, it just requires going down this ladder right here. Right, which takes us right to the administration office. All right, the so just one, one, on the second level. One one question, as the as the arguing uh, intensifies here, um, Holroyd, um, I'm assuming you you're the one who's kind of in front at this point. Yeah. And how, he, how far have you gone? He, he's now descending the ladder. Okay, so you guys see the resident android just kind of like turn like, eh, typical humans, and they're bickering, and just starts going down the ladder uh, towards just, the uh, second level. I think, uh, I think Matt, that, that that top right part of the map is the second level. We're trying to go to the That's bottom the right basement. part of the map. We're trying to go All to right, the negative well, one part. Well, yeah, so, so, just, so, everybody, so everybody's clear. 
Level one is the ground floor. Level two is the second floor, which is above the ground floor. And level negative one is the basement, which is below. So you guys are in the middle level right now. Not, where I'm pinging is where that ladder ah. is. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not trying to go anywhere near the administration office. All right, I was reading the map wrong. Okay, so that's floor two, <laughs> basement one. We're on floor one. Yes, yeah, it's a little it. confusing. It's a little confusing. Got it's all right. It. Good thing an android's here to show you guys what's what. No, it, that's not a. This isn't a human android thing. This is clearly a McWhir <laughs> everybody else thing. That's, that's, <laughs> that's... <laughs> uh, love it. Um, I would like everybody to please give me a. Then yeah, we should go down to the mass housing that we're supposed to go to. We gotta follow protocol. Everybody, please give me a uh, observation roll. <clears throat> no, not, no uh, skills or anything. It, it is a skill. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. My skill's zero, so it's just my wits. And please tell me how many successes, if any, you get. Zero Three, successes. Uh, I got one. Matt, how many did you get? Three. Uh, I have... So, sorry, when you have zero in the skill, what do you... You, you just use the attribute that's linked yeah. to it. So you just okay. use wits. wits. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got zero. Okay. Um, so McWhir, uh, despite everybody yelling at you and saying that you don't know how to be a good leader, um, you, uh, as as Holroyd goes down the ladder, are you down the ladder yet, Matt, or are you still on the main floor? Uh, I'll be going down the ladder to the mass housing. Okay, so as you go down the ladder... Um, there is uh, like a grate to the ventilation shaft that runs throughout the uh, the structure in the base. And as you're going down, everybody's kind of bickering and yelling and just being generally uh, obnoxious and noisy. You, uh, you definitely see and hear something scuttle through the vent as you're going past it. Um, and it goes from like left to right, you know, down like a cross path of the uh, of the shaft. Um, it's way too fast to see what it is. Um, it's not very big, as far as you could tell. I mean, it's like a shadow that you see. You did roll pretty well, though. Um, it's fast, uh, kind of small, um, probably some sort of animal, but, um, there's not a whole lot of native animal life out here on LV-426, so that freaks you out a little bit. More giant rats. Because <laughs> again, no one's doing their job around here. No one's cleaning up with the uh, the shit, taking care of <laughs> animal control. No one's doing their job. Everyone sucks. And what did everybody else roll? Tyler, you had zero. I had zero. Brian, you yeah. had zero, and zero. Will had one. <clears throat> yes, I had one. Just okay. enough to get the job done. As these. <laughs> Just enough to observe. Yeah. So you guys noticed that. You make your way down the, uh, the well, you notice that, Mechwer, and then you guys hear him bickering about, or her bickering about uh, giant rats and things like that. So you make your way down the ladder one at a time, uh, Holroyd leading the way, and you find yourself uh, in the hallway on the bottom level that goes, uh, you know, either towards the mass housing and the shower room, or you can go to the vehicle uh, unloading area. Um, so you guys are kind of standing there as you kind of gather around the ladder at the bottom of the, the floor. Um, well, now that we're actually, down here gonna, in the uh, hall... Um, I'm going to do this too. Hold on one thing. Will, I'm going to give you control of uh, Hirsch's thing. Just uh, so I don't have to deal with it as well. Will, you are now Hirsch's my buddy. Gonna oh, wait, I'm going I'm to give everybody control of Hirsch. So just keep him with yeah. you unless I say otherwise. He's my buddy. Okay, well that works. Is that you laboriously dragging him along? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll come with. Will, get Autopilot me What's for 30 call? seconds while I pee. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we've got movement in E2 and, or E1 above us and the whatever, but we've been told to come down here towards the mess. Are you sure it was towards the mess housing or was it? Yeah, I think we're supposed to rally here. I think we, I think this. Yeah, that. Maybe. That would be the most logical place, even even though the, the message didn't specifically say, like, go to the mass housing yeah. section. That would make the most sense out of all the stuff that's down here. And yeah, it, don't you remember point. your fire drills in school? You guys always yeah, went down to the sure. showers and hunkered down. <laughs> you always <laughs> 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 during fire drills. 
Uh, okay, do we so hear anyone? Is everything looking good? Are the good? lights yeah. on? Uh, no, just the emergency <laughs> lights are on. Oh boy. So it's uh, uh, so it's that, dark. Uh, it, it's dark-ish. Um, it's got you know kind of the uh, um, like that reddish glow from like an emergency backup light that's on, and you know that's that's throughout this area. That's all that's that's going. Holroyd's gonna call out. Hello, hello. Just an echo. Echo. Um. Doesn't seem like anybody's down here, guys. Is the door locked into the housing? Uh, is that where you guys are going first? Yeah, right Holroyd's next. He's yeah. standing right at the okay. door there. Okay, so you guys go past the shower room. Uh, nothing unusual there. Uh, you know, may, maybe used recently, still a little damp, but nothing. Um, not like it was just used, you know, maybe earlier in the day. Um, other than that, uh, everything looks normal. Um, but then you guys get to the um, door, and as you guys are making your way through uh, this tunnel, it, it is got a very uh, dank and, and grimy smell to it, uh, which is pretty normal. Um, it's fairly claustrophobic. Um, especially in the housing area, it's just, it's tight, it's cramped, you know, it's, it's meant to just pack as many people in here as possible, kind of like on an airplane, it's not very comfortable. Um, and uh, as you get there, um, you guys can all start to see signs of some sort of fight that happened here. Um, you can see there are doors that are damaged, um, that some look blown up. Uh, or even like torn apart and shredded. There's bullet marks uh, and and burn marks here and there. Um, and you do find a couple mutilated bodies. Um, not nearly as many as you would anticipate. Uh, definitely not all 150 colonists made their way down here, um, but there is a few and they uh, definitely have been attacked and killed by something uh, that does not look like gunfire, uh, like torn apart, you know, claws or teeth. Um, and uh, there is fairly uh, still wet and sticky blood um, where these bodies lie on the walls, on the floor. And some of you can see drag marks uh, where clearly bodies have been dragged uh, further down the tunnel. You guys also smell like a like a burning kind of ozone type smell like something was burned or scorched um however uh it is it is disheartening especially mcwer for you you i mean you all see faces you recognize but mcwer you see people that uh you know you work with and, and care about and uh it's it's not a uh, a pretty sight um everybody gains a point of stress from witnessing this horrific scene. Ulrich says, uh, stay here, stay by this ladder. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna look a little bit further, but don't come, don't follow me. Uh, uh, sure, but uh, let me know when it's clear. I wanna take a look at, uh, I wanna try and determine cause of death here. Okay, so uh, Holroyd then, I assume you're gonna, are you going further in through the door? Yeah. Okay, and everyone else is standing in the hallway, like at the crossroad, basically? Like, by the door? All right, that's where you guys are standing. Perfect. Um, okay. So, uh, okay, all right, as you go through and search, um, you d give me a, um, give me an observation roll, please. All right. I'm going to try it on this thing, if that works. Yeah, go ahead. All right, one, just three, tell me what you, tell one, me what you three, three, four. Okay, nothing, huh? Okay. You have to roll another 2d6, Brian. Why? You, do you have stress as an android? No, androids no. do not suffer stress. Good. <clears throat> Dang it. Totally cool. I'm calm. Yeah, you don't... Um, so you search around, Holroyd, and you have a hard time telling what exactly happened here. It looks like, as far as you could tell, that... Um, obviously, they were told to come here if the message is to be believed, and it looks like they probably tried to uh, uh, defend themselves from something. And, um, you know, you find a couple more bodies back here, uh, but 
there's definitely a lot more blood and damage uh, that doesn't add up to the uh, amount of dead that you find here. And you still, you see some more, you know, signs, you know, bullet okay. holes, burn marks, scorch marks. Yeah, there's no blood. weapons, though. Um, Is there anything to loot to find? How, how long do you uh, do you search for, Holroyd? I mean, Holroyd's just... going pretty quick, and uh, he's okay. going to kind of do his weapons aren't necessarily his priority. Um, okay. He's more trying to figure out what's going on. He's going to kind of see how there's like a horseshoe, like basically yes. he can do like a circuit. So he's going to go to like the top corner, okay, the next corner, and then back down into the main corridor. So I'll come out facing the the other side, <clears throat> kind of over here. Okay. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So while he's doing that, what is everyone else doing? Hallroy tells you guys to stay back. Uh, Hallroy's he... going pretty quick. I mean, he's just Holy co- well, I'm going to use the motion tracker again uh, and see if I can, uh, you know, pick up anything. Okay. Give me a power roll. All right. Here comes power roll. Power. Uh, one six. Okay. Um. So again. Uh, you still have movement by the bar, and there's uh, still movement uh, where you guys are, but obviously it's on one of the other two floors. Um, I'm sorry, no, because that's further south. So yeah, there's still something in uh, in the E section. There's still something moving around in Billy's bar, and you pick up another blip um, very close to where you guys are. I in would, the, uh, I would well, say I somewhere around... Bit here like here and uh whatever you do see it is um every time it reappears it's moved a fair distance but it is in it's very in very close proximity to you guys guys i'm picking up something else here it's moving fast uh so you were you were pinging on the ladder we just came down for the move that movement <laughs> Yeah, basically around around where you guys are standing in that area. I mean, at one point it like appears here, so you don't know if it's on another floor or if it's like. I mean, to, to you guys, it's like, well, that's on the wall, so that's amazing. Just any providing sense. some exposition for the folks at home. Holroyd, <laughs> <laughs> right. right. oblivious to this, I presume. What's that? Holroyd's oblivious to this, I presume. Yes. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, uh, Singleton, you pull out the uh, the tracker. What are the other two of you doing? Uh, if Holroyd clears the housing area, I would like to go in and perform either an observation check or a medical aid check on the bodies. I'm not trying to heal them. I just want to see if I can learn their cause of death. Uh, definitely, yeah. So definitely, a, uh, I think a medical check is a, uh, is a good, uh, good thing to do here. So go ahead. I'll bring McQueer with me. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. I like that. You, you can have a story point for that one. I think that's that's fitting. Um, it's Hirsch, by the way, you're bringing with you. Well, oh, Hirsch is yeah, buddy, sure. so that's. I'll bring Hirsch with me. Okay. Here's, here's Matt. Um, his whole okay. finished so, the No, let's. So, um, give me your roll. Uh, scientist sig that is zero successes and one stress oh okay so that is going to be a panic test and let me just tell you how to do that really quick oh no oh no it's it's a one on the stress die is a stress right yes only on the stress oh, dice. no i'm good so that's actually one success okay so it was a one on one of the base dice uh no like you can see what i rolled there i just got a i, I rolled nothing i rolled nothing on the base dice and then i got a six on the stress die Okay. Yeah, so that still counts as a success. Dude, you fucking spent forty dollars on the dice for this game, and you're not using them. <laughs> uh, I got them as packs as part out. of the bundle, so I think it was like fifteen dollars for the dice. No, <laughs> it was forty dollars. Trust me. <laughs> no. Um. Anyway, yeah, dice are too expensive. Um. Okay. Well, um, the first body that you look at, uh, looks like it has definitely has either bite or claw marks on it, and uh, as far as you can tell. Um, there's there's a lot of blood and there's a lot of mutilation, so it's hard to tell what wound was the, the finishing one, but there's extensive damage to the face and the throat and the torso. Um, so if it didn't if it wasn't if this person wasn't killed by like the initial strike, 
the blood loss alone probably would have finished him off really quickly. All right, I will uh, relay that to the group. Okay, yeah, so you relay that. So, God, these people were massacred. Looks like whatever did it, I, it, I don't know, it's like chewed him up and spat him back out. Guys, I don't know if we should stay here much longer. But they're just doing their jobs. They're shitty jobs, but they're just doing their jobs, and this is what happened to them? <sighs> this is horrible. Guys, there's something on my tracker that's moving fast. All right, and uh, Singleton, as you say that, um, you're trying to keep track of this blip, and you're like, you constantly, as everyone's bickering and talking, Hallroy, you finally uh, finish your circuit and get back out into the hallway, and literally as you do, um, Singleton, like, you're trying to keep track of this thing. It's moving fast. You're like, guys, 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 and no one seems to be really paying attention to you. And then um, there is a vent near you that uh, the grate just comes bursting off. And um, we're going to do initiative here. Holy shit. Um, and if you could, uh, Singleton, give me an observation roll, please. Oh, that's the one I'm the worst at. Oh, oh god damn it. Well, what happens when you roll double ones? Is that bad? No. Nope. you just I, miss? That's not right. any, there's no stress dice, right? No. You okay. just have one stress, right, from the very beginning? Well, we got, we got rid of oh, that, right, because we took a moment? Yeah. No, 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 no. Only, only, only Will's character did because he used a signature item. Oh, I thought when you said, "Oh, you guys have all had a moment to decompress here," we got rid of that. No, no. Oh well, then I have a stress dice. Yeah, everyone right now has one stress except for Sig. Or I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sig, who used the. No. Whole, Every, everyone has word. everyone has two except me. That is one. You're right. My bad. So roll two more dice. Yeah, basically, in order to get rid of stress, other than using your signature item, you have to actually, like, rest. Okay. You guys haven't done that. Um, Got it. So, yeah, you'd roll two more dice, which would be stress dice, and if any of those are a one, then you have a chance to panic. Okay. Got it. All right. All good? Uh, no. I rolled a one on one of my stress <laughs> okay. uh, um, all right, so let's uh, let's just grab the panic rules here, really. Quick. So now I roll another. Yeah, let me just let me just double check to make sure I'm not giving you false rules here. I'm make sure we're doing this right. Okay, so um, when you roll a fail, um, your, your skill fails, and you don't you can't push the roll, so you can't try a reroll. Oh. Um, and you roll a d6 and you add your current stress level to the roll. Okay, copy that. So tell me so what you're... I'm a stress level of two. Yes. Right now, I'm going to roll a d6 right now. So I rolled uh, a one. So I'm keeping it together. You managed yes. to keep your nerves in check. Okay. okay. So um, you're freaking out as this is happening. Um, yeah, goddamn right and, I'm fucking freaking out, Chris. As that happens, uh, you're more just obsessed with keeping track of what's on your motion tracker. And this, <laughs> this vent um, bursts open, and we're going to do initiative here. So we have, what, there's one, two, three, four, six. <clears throat> okay, so I'm and just how do we do initiative? I'm just going to draw the random initiative cards here, and I'll tell you what I get. So I'm just going to go left to right. So I'm just going to give you a number. Just remember what it is. So, Hallroyd, you are three. Sig, you are five. McWhir, you're four. Singleton, you're two. And very fitting, the creature is at a one. Son of a bitch. Uh, okay, well, I guess that, that thematically makes sense, because you and the creature are, are the ones kind of doing the tango here. So, the, the vent bursts open, uh, basically comes flying off the wall, um, and something moving like lightning comes jumping like through the vent and it lands on the ground and comes scuttling at you 
and what you see is a creature with a very long tail. It is fleshy in color, and its body reminds you of like a spider or an arachnid with many, many long uh, limbs attached to its body. Um, and you guys are all seeing for your first time. You don't know what it is, but we all know here in the real world, a face hugger. Um, and so um, everybody gains a point of stress uh, from encountering something that they have never seen before. Damn. Um, it freaks you the fuck out. And now in this game, what happens when you are fighting a creature, all of the creatures in this game roll a d6 to determine what they do on their turn. So they have different types of, they don't just keep swinging at you to try to kill you. They all do different things and like signature moves based on the cool shit they do in the movies. So we know what a face hugger is capable of. So let's see what it's going to try to do here. Oh, that's pretty bad. Um, so I rolled a five. I rolled a five, which is oh, God damn it. face grapple. The face hugger, hugger leaps at its victim. Make an opposed roll against the target's close combat skill. Yeah, this could be bad. So, um... Oh, good thing I'm balling in close combat. So good at close combat. Alright, well, it rolled fairly poorly, so... Okay, so I have strength 4 and close combat 1, so I roll 5 dice, right? And I gotta get... Plus your stress dice. Okay, all right, and I gotta roll not ones on the stress dice and sixes on the others. Sixes on, if you get six on stress, those count as well. Those count as well. Okay, great, but all right, I'm gonna just not roll any ones on the stress dice. There you go. And some sixes, here we go, booyah. That's the spirit. All right, uh, I rolled one, I rolled two sixes and no ones. Okay, so you got. You see this thing, and McWhirr, you're standing there. Uh, this thing, um, you're on the other side of the vent. So when it, basically, you guys are on opposite side of the vent when it bursts out, and it turns and immediately goes for Singleton, and um, it scuttles down the hall, and with surprising speed and power, this thing launches itself like with the with the agility and height of like what you'd expect a cat to be able to do, and it goes flying directly at your face, and Singleton, you manage to. Um, throw yourself against the wall, uh, and it basically goes flying past you, and basically lands in the cross, uh, the crossroad, um, that goes to all four hallways. Um, yeah, so, Holroyd, you see this thing, uh, you know, hit the ground and, you know, kind of come screeching to a little halt, as it's obviously deciding what it's gonna do next. Um, and then, um, check something. Number three. Um, I actually forgot one thing. Um, so some monsters have uh, a speed, have speed values, and they draw an initiative card for every speed they have. So he's actually also acting at initiative six as well. Um, so he goes twice. Yes, he gets to make two actions a turn, basically. Because uh, most of the obviously most of the aliens don't have ranged attacks, so they and they're super fast. Um, so it jumps. Uh, you um, you you dive. You know, throw your way out of the way uh, out of the um, out of the way. It lands, and you don't see any eyes or like face on this thing, Holroyd. Um, but you swear, if it did, it would definitely be looking straight at you. But when it, like, comes to a stop, it turns and, like, you feel like it looks right at Singleton and it looks like it's going to make another dash at him. Um, but that won't happen until it's next initiative. So that's initiative one, so Singleton, you were at two, if I recall? I sure was. All right. What are you going to do? Um, Scream? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I'm going to try and fire at this thing. Um, I have yeah, a, your character I have actually my has a firearm, pistol. don't you? Yeah. yeah, I have a service pistol, so I guess uh, I'm going to try and fire at it. Uh, I That would be in my ranged combat, which I have a, a 5 in, plus 2, and then my stress dice. So... Yes, now, keep in mind, if you, um, when you are firing a weapon mm -hmm. if you, that has ammo, which this thing does, I believe it says you have one reload for your weapon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the, way, the way reloads work is very simple. When you take a shot, 
if you roll a one on one of your stress dice, you run out of ammo in your clip. So you don't keep track of bullets or shots in this game, you just keep track of the clip. And uh, right. if you run out, which if you roll a one, it does, um, then uh, the clip is empty. You know, you just, you're firing spraying bullets or you didn't have any loaded or whatever it may be. Um, and yeah. I thought that was a cool. So thing. do you? Uh, I, yeah, I guess. So do, do you? Is there an option to roll less dice to mitigate that and do no, less shots? Or no, 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 right. no. You are the stress represents you are starting to panic. You're a little more Got focused, it. so you you know you're on guard. You have a better chance to obviously succeed, but you are also in a mild state of panic as well. Got it. Okay. All right. All right, so I it looks like I got seven for my regular dice and then three stress dice, and I'm gonna light this fucker up, I guess. <laughs> All right, here's this one. Oh boy. Um, so I didn't get any sixes. Can I then? Uh, did, you get any, did you get any ones on any of your stress dice? No. Then can I okay. do the pass the thing? You can do push, and I believe your character's ability lets you push twice your talent. All right, cool. Reckless, so, I think is what it's called. Yeah. So I'm gonna push then again to. Uh... Okay, so you can roll. You can reroll anything that wasn't a six, which in this case sounds like it's all your dice. Yes. So I can reroll. You stress for that as well, don't you? Yes, you gain a stress when you push. Oof. <laughs> um. <laughs> man. Well, if I don't fucking shoot this thing, it's gonna be latched onto my goddamn face. Um, <laughs> um, uh, let's go for it. Well, I'll add a stress dice. You don't know that. <laughs> well, I don't not not know that. I mean, you, you definitely feel like it was going for the face or the throat when it dove at you, so I think it's. Well, a guys, they're, they're so forceful and friendly. <laughs> it looks really cute. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's nasty okay. looking. It's a little wet All looking, right. so you definitely, definitely don't want to I got, touch you. Uh, I got three sixes that time. No ones on the stress dice. I did get a one on the regular dice, so I'm guessing it's I've hit, but I'm also out of ammo. No, it's only if you roll a one on stress dice. It's the only time ones matter. Got it. Okay. Um, there you go. Okay, so you pull your gun out, and now in this case um you're gonna want to look at making a ranged attack because when you roll extra sixes on any check including an attack you can do what are called stunts which is extra things and in the case of attacking you can um you can do more damage so um, on 119 let's take a look real quick. Uh, so you're gonna look on page um 119 see something here <laughs> Okay, here we go. So for every extra six you roll, you can do one of the following. This is on page 95. Uh, you, can right, inflict a, you can inflict additional point of damage, which you can do for every six that you roll. Okay. Um, you can pin your enemy, um, which uh, won't work on this because it's, it's a monster. Um, doesn't fucking care. Um, mm -hmm. you, can, uh, you can change your initiative. Um, Position yourself and get to exchange your initiative score with your enemy, taking effect next round. Um, so you could switch your initiative from two to one, and then next round you can go before it, assuming it's still alive. Um, you can force your target to drop a weapon or a handheld object, doesn't have any, or you can force your opponent to fall to the ground or get pushed back. Um, which I suppose you could kind of push it with a bullet, I guess. <laughs> um, or make it kind of stumble back a bit. So you had you had uh, three successes, right? Three sixes. Yes. Okay. So the first one counts as your hit. What do you do with the extra two? Uh, I'm gonna soak him into its damage. Okay. And then, so what is the um, on your weapon? Does your weapon have any bonus or any damage? Yeah, it does. It does damage one, bonus plus one. So th the bonus is an extra dice that you roll. Got it. So you can roll an extra dice. So you can get another six on there. Uh, dice, got dice. it. Understood. So I'm rolling one more d6 as damage? No, as get... your, like, skill roll to see if you hit. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, I did not get another six. Okay. Okay, and then, so you're gonna do a total, and what was the damage on the pistol? One? One. Okay, so plus two, that brings it up to three. 
Yeah. Uh, this thing does have some armor. We'll see if it does anything. Um, okay, it has so it has two uh, armor. I'll just let you guys know. Um, so it rolls two dice, and I rolled one six, so it reduces the damage from three to two. Um, so you shoot this thing, and you are you are focused. Your shots are dead on. You guys see, uh, Singleton gets herself under control, and um, you pull the gun out, steady aim it with both hands, and just pop, 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 three shots and not a single bullet wasted. All three shots hit this thing, and uh, you know the first shot kind of stuns it. The second shot, it kind of like flips uh, onto its back, and the third shot, just more uh, goo erupts from this thing, and it lets out a weird, uh, weird screech um, as you just, you know, annihilate it, and uh, it is very much dead. Um, it stops Hell moving. Hell yeah. It stops moving. Um, and you guys see when, when it strikes, especially you, Hall Roy, because you're probably closest to it at this point. Um, this thing, when it's getting shot, you see what looks like a yellowish, greenish fluid uh, in place of blood. And when it hits the walls and the floor where this thing dies, you can see it is acidic and eating through whatever it touches. And eventually after the shot, uh, stops ringing in everybody's ears. You can hear the sizzle of the um, uh, of the acid as well as, and that you know. Then the, uh, you get the, the smell of it as well in the air, and just that Ooh. as it dies. Um. So that's the end of initiative. Good well shooting. Done. Uh. Well, guys, you're welcome. Ethan <laughs> <laughs> handily killed the first that. mob. I am stressed the fuck out. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, fondling my toy dinosaur for as long as I can. Okay, and um, I will also say um, for dealing with your very first alien and just fucking rocking it, you can reduce your stress by two, not just one. Hell um, yeah. Yeah, whatever. As the, you know, what's the the phrase? If it bleeds, we can kill it. It definitely seems to be the case here. Yeah, it bleeds fucking acid. It looks like Chris. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> All right. Well done. Can um, I change my signature item to, like, one of those booby mouse pads? One of the what? <laughs> if you want oh, a joke. <laughs> no, no, you do not it's have like, a booby mouse pad. like, pulls out one of those booby mouse pads, and he's just like, what are you doing? No. Um... Uh. Not even yes, sure there you knows what happened. I just hear like a bleh, 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 bleh. Well, it, in the hallway, you do see something fly past the hallway as it missed him, and then you see the hallway light up with the three gunshots. And um, yeah, everyone's aware of what's going on at this point. So, um, Holroyd, like, who was standing on the other end of that, had he missed, <clears throat> <laughs> is fucking fuming. He's raging. Uh oh. <clears throat> He's like, Sig, get over here. I told you not to wander away. Don't. We don't know what's down there. All I've done is a preliminary sweep. We don't know. This is not time for your bullshit. Get back here, Hirsch. Come on. Get back Pretty here. Pretty sure we're standing in the safest position right now. Just throw that out there. What the fuck is happening no, in the it, hallway? It, it's not the time. It's not the time for your antics. Let's go. We got to stay together. We got to work together. This is not how this is going to get done. There's Can bad I, things are happening uh, back there. And we've missed whatever it is. We need to get whoever we can and get them to a safe place. What the hell is this thing? I can take a, a I can I can take a check, but first of all I'm gonna look at everybody and just see uh how stressed out are my uh, compatriots looking here. Are you guys on edge at all or are you feeling fine? At two. Uh I'm moderately stressed. Thanks for that excellent role playing, Matt. <laughs> I'm shaking in my boots. <laughs> yes, Sig. I feel like I have two whole stresses right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for asking. I mean, I'm not a little stressed. I'm not really stressed. I'm kind of kind of stressed out right now. I felt know. like I have been relieved of half my stress. I am definitely at N plus two stress currently. Uh, all right, so I'm going to, I don't know, try and put everybody at ease. I'm going to observe this alien's body with my class skill. Well, should we see if we can find anything in the room? Like, can we see if we can, you know, find any weapons while we've already dealt with this, or There's are we gonna a... get punished for looking at another fucking alien? Whatever weapons were in there didn't work for shit. 
I'm just saying that. If there are weapons there, they haven't done the job that they're supposed to do. Well, I suppose. It's also like, this is also just like a colony, right? It's not like we're going to find like pulse rifles and that kind of stuff in here, I guess. So maybe it's best to move on. So where, like, I, I have a feeling that those two blips that are showing up, I mean, those could be survivors. Like, if they're not moving fast like this thing, then they're probably human. So I have a feeling we should try and go investigate those two spots um, from here. All right, so uh, I successfully that is, that's my analyzed feeling. the corpse of the creature, Chris, and I would like okay. to ask you two questions about it, because that's sure. what I did. Um, and you're looking at the list of questions on the thing, right? Uh, yeah. There's a specific list in the, uh, the description of the talent. So, um... How does this thing work, and what is its purpose? Based on what you can gather, um, it definitely looks like it was going for the head or the face. Um, it's hard to tell because it's been partially, you know, exploded from the gunshots. Um... <sighs> You're, you're guessing, as far as purpose, to uh, feed, maybe? Uh, hard to tell. I mean, its its internal bits are, are gone, and he hit this thing dead center, so... Um, the little dangly part that, you know, we all know what that thing does uh, is not really there, so... Alright. Uh, it looks like uh, I shot I'll, its dick right off. I'll pass that on to everybody, and everybody can remove one stress. Yeah, so if you guys Hell yeah. ex explain that to the group, because that's probably pretty important. That's my analytic skill as the science officer. I can analyze aliens, like, or just, like, evidence of them existing, and, like, try and learn more about them. And as I learn more about them, the better I roll, I can, like, educate us and reduce our stress level for fighting them. That's awesome. I'm all for that. So Holroyd is definitely saying, like, look, let's leave this. Let's get out of We need to leave this place right now leave this I, behind i agree with holroyd and yeah that's why you, that's why you need to stop it. doing this let's go not um they had, they had nothing to help them the armory if we just count if we if we move past the vehicle bay down to the maintenance offices and we get up that ladder we pass the tech labs so i could study this thing even more and we hit the armory the med lab and the command center so we can hit the mainframe we can hit well, well, we don't deck. have time to sit here and study yeah. this damn this thing. This thing is kidding? dripping acid. Yeah, how are you going to carry you, that thing without burning it? your damn hands? Let's go. Look, <laughs> I'm just saying. What are you going to carry it with? I, I, all I'm saying is if we go to the maintenance office and get to that ladder, anything above that ladder can help us out. There's the armory, there's the med lab, there's the command center, and there's the tech lab. Well, sure, I'm all for gathering some tools. What are you but... talking about? That's the, that's the recreation and family facility. No, down at the maintenance offices, that oh, ladder. Oh, not the maintenance bay, the maintenance offices. Yeah, yeah. So this ladder here, that like I'm, I'm like reminding yeah. everybody right yeah, now. I see it. If we head up that ladder, there's like all the good stuff is above that. All right. So a couple things happen. Um, at this point, um, you guys are again discussing what to do. Um, everyone is kind of gathered. I'm assuming right now everyone's gathered in the hallway around this thing discussing. Right? Is anyone doing anything different? No. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure Hirsch is standing here, looking north. Okay, yeah, he's he's with you guys. Um, what I would like to be doing is trying to take a record of everyone who's down here at the corpses. You know, I gotta keep my notes updated and see who is and isn't deceased. Okay, all right. So while everyone is kind of arguing, uh, McWhir, you uh, you go into where um, yeah, you know, past Hirsch and start looking around and, and checking. I wouldn't say we're arguing. Actually. We're just formulating an attack plan. Well, yeah, whatever. Um, so, uh, a couple things happen. Um, are, you, are you arguing with him about whether or not we're arguing? <laughs> Matt, uh, if you could um, give me an observation test, please. All right, just a second. And and how thorough are you trying to be when you're searching here? Are you just quickly glancing at people? Or are you, like, really trying to make sure you can tell who's who? Well, I'm trying to decide who isn't isn't alive, and that's a pretty important task. Well, I'm making sure I'm doing the job right. Okay. So I got two successes. All right. So a couple things. Um, you know, you, you finally turn the corner and really see the carnage in here, and you're getting pretty close to these bodies and, and looking. Um, it is uh, it is 
horrifying to see what's happened. And, and you see people that, you know, you would definitely consider friends. Um, you, just you, gain an additional point of stress just seeing this. Um, it's, it, however, however, um, you do identify, um, you're able to identify everybody except one body that's just mutilated beyond repair. Um, all you can tell is that it was a female, but you can't tell who. Um, however, you, uh, as you are going through the muck and guts, you do find uh, a couple things. Um, you find, it looks like, some things and gear that they had tried to arm themselves with. You find uh, a service pistol, uh, much like Singleton is carrying, and you also find a M41A pulse rifle. Wow. Oh, hell yeah. And... You also find an M240 incinerator unit, which is the flamethrower. Wow. Okay. Well, um, okay. I'm going to put those to the side. They are all empty and out of ammo. Oh. They have well, no reloads. Well, I'm going to put them to the side. I'm going to have a brief little moment of silence my fallen companions. Once I've kind of said my piece, I will uh, kind of bring the weapons and kind of put them out in the hallway. They go. Well, what we have it here is a travesty, but fortunately, at least we, that we have these available to us, and they'll put the weapons out for anyone who can take whatever they want. I have no interest in them. And as you throw them down um, and kind of say that, um, you uh, you hear um, some static and crackling from the intercom just to the south of you guys, and it sounds like you hear a voice. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, is anybody there? I can take a com tech if you need me to. Let me just double check one thing here. And I'll tell Hirsch to uh, block this ladder that I'm next to. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying around a meat bag with me. I'm like, Hirsch, just stay in yes. there and look that way. H Hirsch is my buddy. Come on, Hirsch. He's okay. my buddy, too. Yeah, so um, this, this intercom buzzer goes off. It kind of freaks you guys out because, you know, otherwise, aside from you guys discussing things, it's it's quiet. You know, McWhir throws down the weapons and is like, um, you know, at least we've got these. There's kind of a moment of silence. You guys decide what to do. And then this burst of static from the intercom. And, uh, yeah, there's a shouting and, um, you know, keeps keeps buzzing. And finally, uh, Sig, you go over there, you answer. Um, and uh, there is someone panically uh, screaming to you uh, for help. Um and go ahead and give me a comtech test to see how much of this message you can make out because obviously things aren't working as well as they should be everyone no just 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 uh, sake. uh one success okay um so it is a uh, uh a guy by the name of wes osterman um he is another ref roughneck on the base um and uh he is, works on the heating systems uh, in the in the base, you know, kind of like heating and air conditioning sort of thing. Um, however, he is known to be a bit of a drunkard and disorderly, um, and he is uh, like shouting, like like like, help me! But if this thing's trying to kill me, it's I'm, you guys got to get up here. Anybody? Is anybody out there? And um, you can kind of hear in the background like a loud like bang, not like a gunshot, but like a loud thud or a crash and as he continues to panic and, and shout at you for help you can hear this boom boom like over and over like something is hitting something really hard and with a lot of force uh what Oscar, is your location he's, he's like uh sig sig is that you i i'm uh uh, uh I, i'm up in the bar i'm up in the bar There's, this thing's trying to try to kill me man it's a <laughs> Osterman, buddy, if you don't have a gun, you gotta fucking hide. You gotta hide right now. And, um... Let's see. Uh... He, uh, he continues to, um... Uh... To try to talk to you, and the, uh, the comm starts getting really staticky, and, um, it doesn't seem to be working properly, and you're kinda, kinda losing, um... Kinda losing him. But yeah, it definitely sounds like he's in trouble and something is uh, is trying to get to him. I'm going to uh, ask. You 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 all hear this? Um, 
Sorry, do we know where it's coming from? Did I miss that? Yeah, it's Billy's bar. Billy's bar. I Let knew it! Billy's bar. Let's go! Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, do we want to get weapons first, Holroyd? Like, uh... Well, I... The weapons are just sitting in the hall. Anyone can yeah, take them. Yeah, yeah no, but those, those, we those weapons are completely bingo on ammo. If we, well, if we go up... probably has ammo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If we go up the maintenance office ladders, there's probably ammo, incinerator units, pulse rifles, maybe even, I don't know, like, suits we can get in. I, I don't think this stuff, I don't think this is waiting for us. I, I think, yeah. So do we want to go straight towards the bar? We, we look, let's take what we have, try and help uh, what, O'Malley. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we got. If we want to help your friend, <laughs> we gotta go now. Why did you go straight to him being Irish? Because he's drunk at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. His name is Osterman. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the armory? Um, the I'm... armory is, is it's uh, the command crew quarters. See that uh, crosshair symbol, Matt? The map, the map legend is on the bottom. I mean, unless oh, we can grab. Gotcha. Okay. Unless we can grab and go on the way, like, as we're running towards there, um, you know. Uh, Billy's bar is on the first level, Armory's on level two, so we're not passing it. Yeah. So, we, I guess we can go straight to Billy's bar if you guys want, but, I mean, that's fucking Osterman. Like, Holroyd, is he going to be good to us in this situation? Is that guy going to be falling all over the place? Just asking, because, I mean, you're a rough neck. You know? okay. I mean, I think we gotta look out for who we can look out for. We're, we're just burning time here. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get him. All right. Okay. Um. So, which where are you guys going? I'm guessing it would be. Uh, it's got to be this letter, right? Uh, we, is that we the fastest way ladder? we go up through that ladder and then does that take us then North, by with this ladder and then come that back ladder and... takes you to the to... north lock area so it takes us out at the north lock and then we cut down block a1 and then right over to billy's bar i believe that ladder takes you up to the post room that's what i was looking at that's what it looks uh, like to me what... which is just north of the armor just north of b2 no, between the... b2 and a2 how do you, post, sorry, how do you room? ping? Sorry, yeah. the post, just long click. The post room on level one only goes to the post room on level two. The, that ladder, that, so if you look, yeah. you can kind of see the outline of the structure. That ladder yeah. only comes out on A1 at the north lock. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay, no, you're right. Yeah, it, it, it would be. So we would have to get out at the north lock, cut down A1, and then over to Billy's bar. Well, we, yeah, we gotta go up here. What is going on? So we go up the northeast ladder here, come out there, and then actually we can go straight across this passageway here, right? No, I see what, so this ladder on the lower level, this one here, yeah, accesses this ladder. Uh, which accesses this ladder what? so we would we would get we would get out. this place if you if you guys look at the outline of the structure here and here yeah you can see how it matches up because of like it's like three little sections oh yeah so it, it would right. come out of, we could come out on a1 then too so we, we would get out an a1 sorry. and yeah. uh that can get us to billy's bar or we can just go up to yeah. a2 into housing and walk over but i i think a1 would probably be better maybe well, even if we got out of A1, then we still have to go up the ladder uh, here and then over, that, which gets us here so that we can take this passageway. To well, Billy's Bar you can get to from either first or second level. Oh, can you? Oh, we, got, we just have to go outside to get to it? Yeah. All right, you guys need to make a decision. Otherwise, uh, McWhir, you got to get your crew in shape here. All right, we're going up the well, northeast ladder. Qu so northeast question ladder, on the map. Mm -hmm. On floor one, there's these little white sections that connect the buildings. Can we get that through the first floor or just the second floor? Uh, ping what you're talking about. So we have these little white sections here. Yes. Is that only accessible on the second floor or also the first floor? Um, I think what it is showing is it's showing them on here. You see how there's these paths? Right. So it's, right. White. it's on another level. If it's black yeah. or dark green it's on our level so we have to get to the second floor 
until you even get to Billy's Bar through the yeah. first floor. What's well, such a weird layout? Who does that? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Place. And I guess there's there's ladders that go down. To we it. have to go to A1, run to the post room, go up the ladder at the post room, and then run to Billy's Bar. I guess. Yeah. I don't even. I don't even know. I mean. Yeah, that makes sense. You go to A1. You take the path south on A1 to the post room. You take the ladder up to the second floor post room, and then you head west through that long hallway. To There's got to be a way to get out. I, I'm fine with that, but before we go, we have three guns here. You guys want to load up? Yeah, I'm going to take one of those pulse guns. rifles. Is a I'll pulse take... rifle, a handgun, and a flamethrower? Yeah, throw. I'm going to take a friggin'... Uh, actually, I'll take a flamethrower. Holy shit. Okay, just uh, it's the regular rules in the book. Um, here's the weapon section. Pulse rifle already? All right, I'm not, Sig, I'm not gonna I'm take a gun. Singleton, you take the flamethrower. Hallroyd, you take the pulse rifle. Who wants pulse the pistol? Yeah, I already have a gun. I I'll take with... the pistol as like you know a, a last resort. You know, punch my own team. Hirsch can take pistol. the pistol too. I mean, he's uh. I'll take it and keep it in my. Is it, there's no ammo in the pistol? No, sure. all the guns are empty. All right. Uh, is there any, uh, like, I don't know, anything defensive, like, gear I could wear that was in here? No, everything else looks, looks crushed. And, uh, again, you guys hear the, uh, um, the intercom starts buzzing again. So there's no parlor uh, down there, like you're saying. I'm, I'm running to the ladder. We are moving. Let's get yeah, going. Get moving. Okay. All right, so you guys go to the ladder, and you guys are coming up to A1, correct? Yep. Okay. Yes. So, you make your way there, and oh, cool. A one is um, offices. Now, this part of the colony is usually fairly busy. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's office space and uh, cubicles and things here, um, but it's always in disarray. Nobody really cleans up after themselves, and because a lot of people use the same workstations, you know, you've got three or four people's uh, work worth of stuff just piling up um, and you know just like in the films uh, when the marines show up um, everything is eerily uh, empty and quiet you know there's the half eaten donut on the desk with the water dripping in the old cup of coffee um, and no sign of anyone um, some stuff is in disarray it looks like some may have been knocked over in the panic to get downstairs but um, otherwise, you don't really see anything else other than, you know, office supplies and, and you know, uh, trash bins that are full and knocked over. Um, so, yeah, you guys get up there, and um, what do you do next? Uh, I'm going to start cautiously. Well, I, we're going to send the android first, right? All right, buddy? Yep. Boom. Okay. Start following Hallroy down uh, the hallway, right? Down A1. Okay, so you guys going towards the ladder in the post room, correct? Yeah. So you can get up to the next floor? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, just as a note, like, Sig is always going to try and be the third person in the marching order. Like, two in front of him, two behind him. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll pick up the rear. Okay. Hirsch, Hirsch will be between you and um, uh, Sig. So he'll be number four. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm number two, I guess, then. Uh, yes. All right. So I need all of you to make an observation roll, please. Boom. Here we go. Hulk dokie. I'm going to try it on here again. I like doing it on here. Ooh. Double ones of my stress die. Uh-oh. But one success. Uh, if you get any stress, you fail the roll. Okay. Well, I got two stress. Uh, I also failed the roll. Oh, come on. What is, what is... All right. Did that. anybody pass? <laughs> uh, I got two successes. I'm bad even on virtual dice. It's amazing. So it looks. Matt, it... Uh, did you count the stress I took off of you, Matt? Yeah, I gained extra stress for going to that room and seeing everybody dead. Oh yeah, fuck. <laughs> well, so I'm curiosity. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Sig, you're the only one who passed, correct? <laughs> yeah, I got two successes. Okay. And then, did anybody stress other than McWhir? Okay. So, make work. Let's take care of your panic first. So okay. you're going to roll a d6 plus the amount of stress you have, which is... A two. Okay. So I got one six. You got a, a six total or six plus two? 
Uh, so Matt got an eight. Oh, okay, we're actually yeah. adding these together. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm not looking at the dice guys because I'm trying to keep track of the music and everything. So Matt, Matt got a six plus two. Okay, tremble. You start to tremble uncontrollably. All <laughs> skill rolls using agility suffer a minus two modification until your panic stops. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and I know what your next question is, so give me a second and I'll tell you how you make panic stop. <laughs> yeah, I assume I'd have to remove all my stress. That would be my assumption. No, there's, uh, you can do an order. Um, somebody can basically give you an order to chill the fuck out. And, uh, I believe it's using the command roll. And, uh, okay. So, um... I, uh, can I, can I see him flip it out and give him a command right now before we move oh, on? Hold on, let me, let me see, um... Okay, if you, so just a couple things. If you're currently suffering from panic, which Matt is, if you're forced to make another panic roll and, and you suffer something else, you always take uh, the newest one. So Matt, if you were to roll again, even if you got one that was less uh, bad, mm -hmm. um, you would take that one instead. Okay. Um, oh wait, no, but if it is lower than the previous effect, it automatically adjusted to one more step severe than the previous effect. So actually rolling lower is bad. So let's say you were to roll a six, uh, it would jump up to the next one, which would be a nine on the chart. Okay. So, um, so you're currently at eight, which is tremble, um, and stopping panic. Another character comes to your aid and makes a command roll. See page seventy-one. Uh, you become broken, which means you're at zero health, or one full turn passes, which uh, a turn is five to ten minutes. Um, okay. So, um, you guys are running through. Uh, Matt, you're just really spooked. This is, uh, this is creepy. It's not good. Where the fuck is everybody? You're worried, like, there should have been more bodies down there. Clearly they've been dragged off somewhere. Uh, and what else could be lurking out here that, uh, after you killed the fucking, you know, acid monster? Um, Holroyd and, uh, Singleton, you guys are pretty focused and head straight through. You don't notice anything, um... Neither does Hirsch. Uh, however, Sig, as you guys make your way through, you're about halfway through the room, and uh, you notice uh, a shape in the uh, south... Um, I'm sorry, not the south. The north uh, east corner of the room. So as you come... Uh, as you come up the ladder and you come through the center aisle between these offices, you see basically the uh, office on the on the left, one of them. It's like glass, you know, the glass uh, panels like in the movie where Ripley was trapped yeah. in the face hugger. So you can see there is a shape uh, in the, like, the corner of the room, and it instantly catches your eye because its silhouette just does not look like anything you recognize or notice. How many successes did you get? Two. Uh, what do you want to use the extra one for? I'll use the extra one. Um, you can check on the skills I chart can... to see what it lets you do. Every skill's different with what you can do with it. I will, um... Is, uh... Is... Ah, shit. I'll, I will see if whatever I'm looking at is aware of me and is coming for me. Um... It is definitely aware of everybody, and uh, it does seem to um, be moving slowly. You can't tell if it's moving towards you or just reacting to the fact that the five of you are running through this hall. But um, you see this silhouette. Um, it, it's just, it's bizarre looking, and you notice it shift a little bit uh, as you guys are running down the hall. And then you... Is it you can, bigger you than can red see. box? Or oh, yeah, th this is like like human shape size at least. Um, so this is like uh, is is it locked in that room with the glass? No, the uh the the door and the glass are are shattered. Fuck. Uh, I'm going to duck, but like below the glass, and uh, kind of like do like a tss to like Hirsch and like kind of nod at it, and then do my best to try and be like, all right, all right, all right. All right, so let's do this. Um, I'll let you do that, and then we're going to do initiative. So go ahead and give me mobility, which is for, like, a stealth-type roll. Um, and you're telling that to Hirsch as well, right? Yeah, I'm telling Hirsch to get down. Like, I'm, I, like, tug on his 
jacket or whatever. Okay. Um, what skill uses observation? What stat is it? Wits. That's wits. Okay. Um, well, you are in front of Hirsch, so he he doesn't hear you at first, but he does see you like kind of duck in the corner, and he follows suit. Um, and go ahead and give me a mobility. Mobility is a I, ability, I had, correct? Yeah, I had I had zero successes on it. Okay. Maybe, I could, maybe I should push that. Should I push that? Push it. So you can re-roll, uh, but you have to re-roll everything, including any stress dice, and you gain a stress when you push. I'm gonna I'm gonna push it, and the stress counts for the re-roll, correct? Yeah. Yes. Well, what page were skills on, real quick? Where exactly were you at? Uh, observation is on 68. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Okay, what what happened? Tell me. I'm just gonna read uh, No successes, and I panic on the stress die. Okay, so you gain another stress, and go ahead and give me a panic roll. That's a total of six. Okay, you keep it together, barely. So, you dive into this room, you duck really quick, um, and you realize, like, fuck, man, what else could this be? And you start to, like, you know, get really nervous. Um, even though Hirsch doesn't hear you say, like, get down here, he follows your lead kind of almost instinctively, and he rolls like a boss on his mobility, um, so he's going to use one of his stunts to give you a, uh, a success. So even oh, though nice. you've failed the test and you've gained the stress, you do succeed at your quote-unquote stealth roll. My um, battle buddy. And then um, he he actually has he had three successes. He's going to use another stunt to get plus one... Uh, on a later skill check uh, relating to this one. So if he tries to hide again, he will get a bonus dice uh, the rest of the adventure, or in a, a future test. Um, so he he kind of uh, ducks right next to you, and um, you guys both basically end up like on your butts. You know, your palms are flat on the floor with your knees kind of up to your chest, and your backs are against uh, the wall that's separating you from the other office. So the wall's to your north, it's to the, the thing, the silhouette south. Um, and you're low enough where, um, you know, there's no window between these two offices. It's a wall. The, the windows only go to the outside hallway. Um, so you guys are hidden in that uh, that office, and he keeps you quiet. And, um, you know, his presence there you know, maybe keeps you from totally freaking out. Um, and he, like, kind of, you know, puts his hand over your mouth, like, shh, don't say anything. Um, and then he kind of looks at you like, you know, what's the deal? Um, but then we're going to draw initiative. So... Dun, dun. We got six people again. Okay, so from left to right, Hallroyd, you're at four. Sig, three. McWhir, six. Singleton, one. Yeah. Hirsch, two. And... For simplicity's sake, do you want to just do Hirsch when I go? Um. Yeah, that's fine. So what number did you have? Three. Three? Okay, that's fine. All right, yeah, that's easy. Okay, so, um, who had one? Uh, I did. Okay. You do not notice, uh, anything. You and Hallroyd are trucking it, and, uh, you don't know, notice this. Well, if you'd like, you can make an observation test to see if you notice, uh... Well, do I notice them duck down? Well, no, you're kind of just trucking straight ahead, so if you want to make an observation roll to see if you notice them, you can, otherwise, you and Hallroyd just keep going. Because you were right uh... behind me, right? Yeah, only, uh... Yeah. Um, McWhirr's behind. I will, I will make an observation roll to see if I notice them hunkered out. Okay. Um, I have a slim chance, but I will take it. All right. Um, I make it. I roll two sixes. Okay. Um. Your other. Uh, so I notice them that they've stopped and that they, they stopped moving and they hunkered down. So I will. Uh, take note of that and kind of stop in my tracks and lower down to where I'm standing and just kind of slower my breathing and just kind of wait and try and listen and see if I can see what they're seeing or try and make eye contact with them. Yeah, so um, you rolled an extra success, so I'll let you use that as a, as a stunt, obviously. Um, so in this case, yeah, you you hunker down as well and you, um, you're in a, uh, an area where you can kind of, you can see Hirsch because he's closer to the door than uh, Sig is. So you can see mm -hmm. Hirsch uh, from the doorway where you're kind of hunkered down, and you can see uh, past him, um, 
you can see McWhirr still running down the hall, uh, about to um, run past the room they ducked into, and you see a uh, a strange-looking silhouette in the the north east office, um, you know where where Sig saw it, and is definitely not. It's human size, but it doesn't look human shaped. Can I? Uh, um, can I try and bat an arm out to? I'm sorry, who's behind me? Sig, to try uh, and Mc, stop him. McWhir is at this point. McWhir, can I bat an arm out to McWhir? Yeah. So I mean, again, you would at this point you were in we're in action phase, um, so you can use you know I would say two fast actions to like do a run or a move. And then, like, same thing, you know, shove an enemy, you know, grapple, you know, kind of count that as a grapple for trying that to would, stop That would, that would be, yeah, that would be my action, then my uh, other one would okay. be... Okay, yeah, my... yeah, you can easily, so, uh, McWhir, as you're running down the hall, um, you obviously see Sig, and looks over, uh, his shoulder, and, like, you see a, a hint of panic in his eyes, and he ducks into that second office, and Hirsch follows immediately, and then you see um, Singleton turn around and bunker, uh, bunkers down into uh, one of the other offices. Holroyd at this point is just about past the A1 area and into the hallway. And uh, you can see a look of concern on uh, Singleton's face. And she reaches out an arm to stop you from like running. And are you motioning for him to like for him to her to take cover or to come into the same room you're in? Do we know we're fighting yet? No. Okay. You're totally unaware at this point, other than you see your, your teammates doing some weird shit. And even those of us that see it, it's just like a huge fucking shadow. So, uh, yeah, Tyler, um, are you are you trying to pull her into the same room you are? Just stop her from going any further? You motioning for her to just take cover as soon as she can? Yeah, What I mean, whatever. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to get her attention and kind of just grab her without making, you know, her make extra noise and just kind of motion her to stop and hunk down and come into where I'm at. Okay. All right. So, uh, so that was initiative, what, one and two? That was one and two. Okay. Two. Who's at three? Should be Will. That's uh, Sig and Hirsch. Okay. What do you do? I'm going to uh, take an observation uh, and like just kind of like peek my eyes like above whatever I'm hiding behind and just like try and figure out what this thing is like well, keep in mind the the wall between you and the other office is a solid wall it doesn't have glass the glass oh, okay. is only on the outside walls that line the hallway oh okay um I will I have a pistol with no ammo and this is an office I'm gonna check the desks and stuff <laughs> see anybody here you know <laughs> okay kept uh up. go ahead and give me an observation oh. roll and uh Hirsch will do the same thing he'll just kind of Actually, he'll assist you, so you get a bonus dice. What the fuck are you doing? That's going to be two successes and a panic, yet again. Oh, okay. If you panic, then it is a failed roll. Fuck. Um, okay, give me a panic test and increase your stress by one. That's a seven. Nervous twitch. Your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range of you increases by one. Um, so that's going to be everyone except Hallroyd, not that it matters, because you're all in the same room. Okay. I'm like, I'm at this guy's desk, and I just kind of lose it for a second. I've got the pistol in my hand, and I, like, pull it open, and I just see, like, files. I'm like, files? Who the fuck keeps files at a desk? And I, like, throw the drawer. I get the <laughs> 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 all right, so yeah, you guys all get spooked because all of a sudden you hear like a god damn it, you know, and you hear like something kind of bump, um, and you're all like, oh, fuck. And um, uh, Singleton, you see that when this noise occurs, uh, the silhouette has kind of moved towards the doorway of the office it's in, and it definitely is noticing uh, where the noise came from. It doesn't seem to be noticing you or McWhir. Um, even though she's kind of still in the hallway, it seems attracted by the noise. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Hirsch kind of, like, swears under his breath, and he looks a little a little sweaty as well. Uh, and you guys do not find anything. Um, so now we're on to four. That's, uh, Holroyd. Okay. Uh, uh, Holroyd, same thing. You can either make an observation test to see if you notice any of this, 
um, or just keep running. I mean, I guess you do hear, you're in a different zone. So you're in a different zone, so you'll have to make an observation test to notice them. Otherwise, you just keep going. No successes. Okay, so uh, as far as you're concerned, it's it's still it's normal. So you just go towards the ladder. I gotta I gotta step away for a sec, but I can still hear everybody. I just can't talk. You're back. Okay. So yeah, you you turn the corner and you basically grab the ladder. And you're about to like slide down. You know. Uh, so I gotta go down. up to go over. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. we're gonna slide up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're an android. It makes sense. <laughs> that's that's in your yeah. skills list. I can yeah, slide up. Yep, just yeah. latches on and just. I mean, so, what, never, so what's the stunt for sliding before? up? How do you yeah. follow that up? Oh, amazing, yeah. Um, so yeah, you grab the ladder and you start to make your way up, um, and then we're on to initiative uh, five, right? Yes, the monster. Okay. Um, I really should have put bookmarks on my book here because I keep having to flip back and forth and losing my. Swap. This monster only has one initiative activation. Uh, it has two. Oh, okay. It, it got, it got, um, uh, who had six? Oh, it had sixes. We had five and six. Oh, I also have six. I'm sorry, it had seven. Um, here's the card. I'm okay. Sorry. So it had five, six, and seven. Uh, so it has five. Um, okay. So this thing has noticed, uh, what is going on, and it, um, it basically slowly moves into the hallway uh, at initiative uh, five and you guys see it now more or less uh, not at its full height it's not fully standing it's still kind of creeping around on all four um, but you see this horrifying silhouette of this creature with this it is it is you know jet black in color it looks damp and wet um, a bit of light reflecting off of it. All you really see other than the silhouette is like the highlights where, you know, light is hitting, uh, you know, its its edges. Um, it has an elongated head, uh, you know, almost like a, like a hot dog, I guess, um, to keep it PG. Just say it. Just say it, Chris. <laughs> uh, you see a Geiger-shaped head. Um, oh. And uh, you see on its back are these what look like four, like, pipes or stacks it reminds you almost like a plant of some sort like a tree uh coming off of its back it and... looks like a penis with other penises growing out of it <laughs> um and it definitely has uh very large claws and uh you can see it has a tail as well that is uh swishing behind it as it um as it slowly makes its way forward and it uh it it not super quickly, but, uh, you know, it definitely seems capable of speed, uh, moves into the hallway, and um, it basically goes to the doorway, and it looks into the office where Hirsch and Sig are at, and you guys are sure there's no way it does not see them or notice them, especially with all the noise they're making. Uh, that's what it does on Initiative 5. Uh, so Initiative 6, like we're... So do I? I guess I have clearly on sight at this point, huh? It's yeah. It's standing in the hall. Basically, it's turned to look into the office. Can so you, can you ping it? Yeah, it's um, it's basically right there. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. So it's it's facing to the west, and you are to its uh. You're south of it. You're you're to its east side. You know, if we say his face is north, I mean, he's, he's looking towards the west into the room. You're off to his right, its right hand side. Okay. Um, based on my knowledge of this building, am I aware of any like secure doors or like security doors or pretty much any heavily fortified door that I know of that's nearby? There is the door that separates A1 from the hallway. There's actually two. If you look at the map closely, there's a door on either side of the intercom and the, the comm terminal that's between A1 and the hallway. So there's two doors, um, both of which are open. They're not massive, but I mean, they are, for lack of a better term, a bulkhead type door. Okay, then I'm going to shout out, get to post and bar the door. And I'm going to basically try to sprint down the post. Okay. Um, and also, um, everybody, uh, this is a new terrible creature you are encountering uh, everybody gains a stress as this thing kind of reveals itself to its full. Oh my god. I am so stressed right now. I am stressed <laughs> and slightly turned on by it. <laughs> so you shout, get to the post and you um, 
you run uh, you run into the hall. Yes. So at this point, you can move from where you're at to the hallway by post, and uh, you know you're basically um, like, how, get, like there. Uh, a little bit further, you get about right here. Oh, oh this side of the door. Okay, perfect. Um, and let us see. Um, and then I'm gonna. Well, I, I have a bolt gun. That's a big gun, isn't it? Uh, no, you're thinking 40k. Your bolt gun is like a tool. Like, think of like oh, a, a bolt, bolt. Like an engineer's bolt yeah, gun. I have yeah. a, a Watasumi bolt, bolt gun, whatever that is. Well, check out the, the page numbers on there for you. So look okay. it up. Yeah, you're not a space marine, um, unfortunately. <laughs> That's what we need right now. I was going to say, I mean, otherwise... We'd be I was fighting, like, like, like 50 of these Xenos. Surprisingly big gun for what like, I do, but I don't care. Did that idiot just stand in front of me and my boat gun? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Emperor. Yeah. Oh, there's only one of these guys? Oh, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Time to purge some Xenos. Okay. Um, Matt. High or low? Uh, I'm high as fuck right now. Okay. Um, despite you running into the hall and shouting... Uh, this thing does not pay any heat towards you, and uh, it continues to go into the room. And um, will uh, give me another mobility check. Uh, what's everybody stress at right now? I'm at three, three. four. Well, you're three, at four. at least one because we just took one. B. Nice roll. I like B. Nice roll. Right, hold on, hold on. Remember, he's an android. He doesn't get stress. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So three, four, and what was the other one? Well, what's three. your stress? Three. Three. Okay, hold on a second. So you roll that, Will? Yep. So, uh, what'd you get, Will? Uh, three successes. Okay. So, um, you instantly regret you know, shouting and throwing this this drawer onto the floor, and you duck behind a desk as you see this thing come into the room, and uh, you see that uh, Hirsch attempts to do the same thing. Now, you guys are kind of separated at this point, and it seems that the thing uh, has taken interest in him instead of you, and... Uh, uh, can I stunt him to give him a success? You can. I'm a uh, two stun, so I'm going to stunt him, so I give him a success, and I'm going to stunt it so that McWhir is impressed by what I just did. I'm going to like backflip over the desk <laughs> and like <laughs> land well, without he, making a noise. Like, oh, dude, this is great, and then he's like, "Oh fuck, it still doesn't matter." Oh no, um, it's not McWhir. That Singleton, Singleton, you're going to see me backflip over the desk and land without making a noise. Oh, and I'm just so like, Singleton, I'm, I'm gone. Like, oh, it's pretty good for a science for a bookworm, you know? Um, <laughs> and then, you know, um, McWorm moves, but just not, or I'm sorry, Hirsch moves, but just not as fast as you do, Sig, and the, the creature uh, sees him, and um, it is, uh, uh, let me just check. This is a, which one is this? We're in what, A1? Okay, and uh, the creature is up on its on initiative seven, and uh, what does it do here? Playing with its prey. The Xeno attacks, but not to kill. The target is knocked to the ground and drops all handheld items, but otherwise takes no damage. The Xenomorph stands over them, taunting its prey to run so the game can go on. The victim gains one stress level and must make an immediate panic roll. And he is currently at stress four. Oof. Oh, and he rolls a six. Ten. Freeze. You're frozen by fear or stress for one round, losing your next slow action. Your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range of you increase by one. So this thing uh, just creeps over to where Hirsch is, and uh, it just takes a swing with its arm and knocks over like part of the cubicle that he's hiding behind. And you see that uh, Hirsch gets knocked basically into the walkway between desks. And it kind of stands over him and it stands to its full height. And you guys are terrified by what you see. This thing is easily more than six feet tall, probably seven to eight feet tall. I mean, it basically touches the, the ceiling almost. And now you see the full length of its tail 
uh, and it is like something out of a nightmare. And the fact that it doesn't kill Hirsch, and you guys can tell with the body language of this thing that it is definitely fucking with him and toying with him. Um, and that is even more unnerving for all of you as you just see this inhuman creature uh, stand above him. And you see, like, all the color drains out of Hirsch's face. He is clutching his little cross necklace, obviously muttering some sort of prayer to his god, and he just freezes, like, sitting there. Uh, basically, he's pushed himself up to his, uh, you know, to his butt with his uh, palm, his one palm on the on the floor, trying to steady himself, and he looks absolutely terrified. And it just unnerves the rest of you to see him just sit there like, you're like, oh my god, he's about to fucking die. Um, and that brings us back to initiative one. Say you, Matt? No, that's me. Um, I can't, is there anything I can, um, throw to, uh, that's in my hand to just, like, distract it, to throw it back down towards, like, the, the north, uh, lock? Sure. Um, give me a... Let's see, you're trying to do some fast thinking here. Um, yeah, go ahead and give me a ranged combat roll. All right. You grab something nearby, maybe a book or, like, a coffee pot or something. Something that'll make noise. You don't just, like, throw a styrofoam cup. You yeah. Know, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but this is to see how far you get in and where it lands. So give me a ranged combat roll. All right. Here I go. All right. Uh, no one's on my up? stress. Uh, I'm at three. No one's on my stress dice. Oh, one six. I didn't make it. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, oh, where are you trying to throw it? Just past it back down the uh, hall from where you guys came? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You throw it and uh, you throw this, this coffee pot and uh, it shatters. Um... And let's see. Uh, this thing turns its head for a second and then turns back to Hirsch. All right. Um, probably should have thrown it at him and started running. Um, I'm going to um, see if I can find. So that was that was one fast action. Uh, that's what I'm looking at here. Or pick, I guess, pick up is. item is a fast action, and probably that was probably to both my fast actions, right? I was, I was gonna say it was a slow action because I made you make a ranged attack. So you still have a fast action. All right. Uh, so I will, um, I'll use my other fast action to uh, get up and get ready to run. Okay, so are you are you um are you then running down the hall following McWhir? I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna follow McWhir. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get up. I'm gonna try and find something else to throw to throw it at the alien's uh, head and then bolt is my is the idea, but just try and get it off him. Well, you can you can either grab an item or you. Or can you know what? Actually, I could fire at it too on my way out. I could try and get its attention that way. Uh, well, that is another slow action, which you already used the slow action. Got it. Okay. So you can you can either run or you can pick up another item to throw next turn. Um, let me pick up another item to throw next turn then. Okay. Uh, I'll since you're spending a whole action to do it, I'll let you decide what you find. Uh, uh reason, obviously, you can decide yeah. later. You don't need to tell me now. Okay. Um, Got it. Just like, oh, I found a grenade in the office. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> apparently, in Will's type of office, where all the clerks are <laughs> armed to the teeth. <laughs> uh, okay, initiative two. Initiative two. Uh, I fingers. think that was. I think that was. Wasn't that McWhir? I'm six. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm initiative three. It must be Hirsch. Oh, Hirsch was two. I'm sorry. Okay. We're initiative three now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll just get rid of that. Okay. Uh, what do you guys do? Or what do you do? Um. So. Uh. So the thing's looking at Hirsch, right? Can I make it to the doorway? Like, can I sneak around behind it and make it to the doorway? You. There's absolutely space. Yes, you can do that. All right. I'm gonna do. It's gonna be mobility. Ability to sneak past it. To sneak past okay. it and get to the doorway. And get into the hall. Right. And uh, that's gonna. Is that a slow action? 
Because like, I'm, hope um, I'm hoping to use that that um, that access panel. Like, is that when I was on the other side of that access panel, like it worked? Like, could I lock that room using that access panel, or no? Is it just fucked? I would say since you're sneaking, it will be a slow action because you're trying to uh, you try not to be noticed. So. All right. Yeah. So I guess I'll just sneak and try next turn if I'm successful to do that. So I'm gonna sneak now. Okay. How much stress are you sitting at? Three, four. Four. So that's two that's successes. No panic. No panic. No panic. Okay. okay. Um. And, uh, it does not notice you. You 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 creep past it and like its tail is kind of twitching, um, dangerously close to you, but it's obviously twitching in anticipation of attacking Hirsch. Um, and I'm I'm gonna give Hirsch a success with my stunt. If he tries to do anything mo with mobility, he gets an auto success. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, you you sneak past it and you're in the hall, and then you still have your fast action. Uh, whatever you'd like to do with that. So fast action. Let me just pull up the chart here. And uh, Singleton, you, will... you see Sig come out of the, uh, the the room, sneaking past the creature. Go ahead, Sig. Yeah, I guess with my fast action, I will uh, continue to run. But I will run. Like, what's the distance on that? Uh, you can move a zone, basically. So I'll move. move I'll move to the edge of the zone, and I'll yell back at the room. Can I do that? The get off of him, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, we'll see what that does. That was, uh, initiative two and three. Uh, Hirsch is panicked right now, so he is, he is frozen in fear. Um, he just, he sits there in total shock, uh, not moving. I'm also gonna uh, be loudly exclaiming, Holroy, where the fuck are you? <laughs> you definitely hear that, Holroy. Uh, oh, yeah? that uh -huh. was three. Uh, initiative four. You hear shouting, you hear the crash of glass, um... You hear, you know, people shouting at you and shouting at someone else. Uh, you can hear, and then you see McWhir running, rounding the corner in a sprint with absolute terror on her face. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. Holroyd's gonna come back around the corner. Get obviously get off that ladder. Come back around the corner and go towards the danger. Okay. Uh, I know there's no, there's nothing, there's no uh, ammo in the gun, right? Correct. Uh, so he's going to use it like a, like a club. Okay. I don't know if I, can I get back in and... You can get in range and make an attack if you'd like. Yeah, I'm going to swing at that thing. Oh boy. All right. Um, well, make a close combat attack and um, what page are weapons? Uh, let's look at the melee weapons really quick here. There's probably something improvised we can count. Uh, blunt instrument, so you get plus one um, dice, and it does damage one. <laughs> one success. Okay. Um, all right. Well, you hit it. So you guys see Holroyd just instantly, and with perfect android calm, hops off the ladder, makes a perfect sprint down the hallway. Um, you know, with the the hands extended as he's as he's running back and forth, and. Um, you see him take the uh, the flamethrower and just uh, you know grab it from the nozzle and the barrel and swings it like a club over this thing's back and he does connect. Um, however, it does have uh, it does have armor, obviously. So, um, wow. Okay. Uh, you do a point of damage to it. Yes. <laughs> um, so you hit this thing. Um, mm. It doesn't bleed or anything, but you definitely uh, it like kind of lets out a little like a little tiny screech, which uh, snaps it out of its um, uh, uh, which kind of snaps it out of um, out of its stalking. Yeah. And uh, that was I, initiative four. Do I have time to yell? Get out of here! To oh yeah, yeah. You can you can yell for sure. All right. Get out more foes. <clears throat> All right. So you do that. At initiative five, uh, the Xenomorph turns to face you, and it it rolls a five. Capture for the Hive. The Xenomorph attacks with its venom-spiked tail. Oh, if the attack causes any damage, 
the Xeno pulls its punch, so only one point of damage is inflicted, and the Paralyzing Venom takes effect. All right, well, let's see if it hits first. Um, that's a lot of dice. Doesn't seem like it would affect an android. I'm just saying. Uh, can't paralyze me. I can pull a bishop on me and cut me. All right, it does hit you. Um, now, it only did one, so it's going to oh. do one damage. Uh, However, uh, you can do one of... Well, I think you can do both because you're an android. First is you can try to block the attack um, because you are holding a weapon of some sort. Okay. Um, and let me see how you do that. Find a melee. Come on, hold right. Uh, so you declare it before they make their attack. Um, and... Oh, you, may, you can still do it, but it's a close combat action, and um, you uh, get to choose an effect for each success you roll. One is de decreasing an enemy success by one, another is counterattacking, or another is trying to disarm. Do I still have my plus one for I have my improvised weapon? Yes, anytime you use it. Boom. Oh, yeah, five successes. <laughs> Oh my god. This All robot, right. I got this thing dialed in. Robot's like, you're too slow. Oh yeah, you can remove five of their successes, and if they have zero, their attack misses you. Well, I only had one success. Alright, so I'll use one to do that, and then what, is there anything else I can do stunt-wise? You can perform uh, counter -attack. a counter-attack. Uh, but you, you, you have to, like, you kind of have to, like, I don't know. Yeah, sure. But for in What's the future, that? you choose this before they roll, so like you don't know that he only had one success. You would like yeah. not locate it, I guess. So oh, like, I see. So I'm, I'm guessing you would counterattack. You got five fucking successes. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. You perform a counterattack, dealing damage to the attacker equal to the damage rating of your weapon. You cannot spend additional sixes to increase the damage. So you just do one damage to it, so it'll make its armor roll again. Uh, this time, you hit this thing square in the face, and Ooh. you know it. It's like. Uh, it's like watching, like, you know, someone try to, like, punch Mike Tyson. There's just, like, no reaction whatsoever. <laughs> um, like, you slightly knock its head to the side, and it turns at you. And if it had eyes, you can tell it's looking at you like, really? Really? Um, however, uh, you do block. The, uh, the tail hits uh, part of the um, the flamethrower, and it does yeah. not strike you. It does not Picture it like that. You. I've got it on either end, and I block the tails. It's whipping around, and then do, like, a spin move, and... <laughs> think I'm gonna like lop its head off, but then I actually just kind of dig it off. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, at that, uh, that was initiative five, so initiative six. So still humans. Uh, so that's me. Um, so there's no way I'm gonna be able to hurt this thing, and I do have a ranged weapon, but I'm currently panicking, so my range is shit right now. Um, can I like take a turn to try to recover a stress? Is that like a thing I can do, or is that not? Not not combat? during combat, no. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Scream! Get the hell out of here! I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm crazy that. stressed out. I'm panicking right now. My my arms are shaking. I'm trying to hold my gun, but I'm like shaking back and forth. I can't keep it steady. Um, I'm just both trying to stay at the doors control with my finger on the button, kind of waiting for everybody to, to, to come through. Can you like, can I like, hold an action? Is that a thing in this game? Um, probably in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, see, so what you, you want to wait? I can. I want to basically hold my action until everyone's through, so I can close the door. Okay, uh, that's what I want to do. That's fine. Well, okay. um, yeah, that, we'll, we'll worry. We don't need to worry about specifics. That's fine. Okay. okay. Uh, so then at uh, seven, the creature makes its second action, um, and four, ready to kill. The Xenomorph grabs its victim, its inner jaws poised to strike. Roll for the attack. If it hits, the victim counts as grabbed and needs to make an opposed close combat roll to break loose. Okay, so it, uh... You guys are lucky right now. My rolls are pretty, pretty shit. Maybe that'll change. <laughs> Very weak alien. I, I do think that attack I just made there, where I hit five successes, might be the best single roll I've ever made. Now I don't think you can block twice in the same no. round. It's one reaction. So it does hit you. Mm. Um, so page ninety-three grabbed. Make an opposed close combat roll. Okay, so it has its dice. So you make a roll. 
whoever rolls most wins. And I'm rolling my same Close combat. Here. Whatever that is. Three successes. Wow, okay. Um, so you see this thing, this thing grabs you. You do take a point of damage. Um, and uh, you do manage, like, it, it picks you up, and you basically do some, like, cool, like, judo, and, mm -hmm. like, knock its arms back. Judo uh, chop. In a surprising burst of strength, and it uh, you drop down in front of it, back on your feet. Um, and however, everybody uh, that witnesses this needs to make a panic roll as they see the character picked up. That's a nine for me. Drop item, whether by stress, confusion, or the re realization that you're all going to die anyway. You drop a weapon or other important item. No, so not my empty pistol. <clears throat> your stress increases by one. So yeah, you drop the pistol as you're sneaking past it. Your stress goes up by one. Um, did anybody else? Sorry, what's what's the what do you roll for the panic? Roll? Just one D6 dice and add, add stress. your stress level. D6. Okay, got it. Should I be rolling you down down the hall? Which is now uh, thirty six. Same zone, so no, you don't have to. Okay. Uh, I got a six. You're fine. And, uh, Hirsch, seek cover. You must use your next action to move away from the... He got worse, so he snapped out of his frozen. Uh, you must use your next action to move away from danger and find a safe spot if possible. You're allowed to make a retreat roll. If you have an enemy at engaged range, your stress is decreased by one. But the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range is increased by one. Jeez, they really like stressing you out, don't they? Yeah, you guys are popping stress pills like candy. Other people are panicked. So, um, yeah, it'll, um, well, he, that's on his next turn. He'll try to get away. So we are back to initiative one. Shoot this thing. So, uh, sorry, I'm just reading the rule here. So who has the worst initiative? Who's Creature, he has seven. Uh, like out of us, who's like the five? I think it's uh, six is Matt, right? Yes. So Matt, you are last? Yes. Y yes, right, I cool. am. Just says at the start of the round, you can exchange your initiative value with anybody in shouting distance of you. So if you want to be the guy that's guarding the door, Matt, like you should, I guess you should be last. And then like, we'll all try and well, get. Okay, well, initiative one, go. Uh, back to me. So I uh, I picked up a, a pretty weighty coffee mug. I guess that seems weird. <laughs> uh, and I it, it says, do you have the pistol anymore? No. No, I still have the I still have the pistol. Um, you know, I, but this one says like life's a beach. So I thought it was just really funny, and I, <laughs> I, I'm gonna like you know run towards the door and uh, try and just throw it at the uh, alien just to kind of give it a good dink in its big wiener head and just get it off Hirsch for a second and try and get it to follow well, it's, it's, pull it's going It's going after Holroyd at this point. It is not noticing oh. Hirsch. Okay, well then I'm going to keep the mug for later and I'm thing. going to uh, I am going to, yeah, I'm going to try and fire at as I'm running towards the door. Um, okay. but, but, but it's let go of Holroyd. It's, yeah, they're basically standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, then I'll I'll, I'll try and, uh, fire at it to try and get it to you okay. know Make get a little pressure attack. off him here i go all right five so it's uh, it's seven plus my now three stress dice okay good lord so many fucking dice all right uh all right um i got one hit okay what's the damage of your gun all. Damage is one. Oh, I'm sorry. I get an extra, an extra one. I got two hits. Okay, so two damage. Yep, and then whatever is. I'm sure he's got uh, amazing armor. It, it makes an armor roll. Uh, I'm sorry. I rolled extra dice. My bad. Let me uh, re-roll that. Uh, pew 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 pew. You do damage it, uh, but it seems like your bullets just aren't made to really hurt this thing. Much. Yeah, I um, figured. But uh, yeah, you do you do hit it, and it lets out a bit of a screech. Oh! Um, and you hit it, and it's like, oh fuck, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um. Okay, hold on. I have to see something here. Yeah. I mean, guys, is is the plan? Are we gonna try and run? Like We're you know, are we trying to get the behind alien. the door? No, the I know, is, but right, I'm just so terrifying. Um, me. This this thing, you shoot it, and it you know you hit it like in the the shoulder, and it lets out a bit of a screech. And much like the previous creature, you see that greenish yellow fluid come bursting out of its body, um, and uh, oh no! Let's see how this works. Oh no! I might get a. Uh... I like the Hicks treatment here. Every time, like, I take a turn, when it loops back around to me, I just gain two extra stress. Like, just from shit happening around me. <laughs> Which I think is pretty good. Holroyd, you are indeed uh, splashed by oh, acid. No. However, it is not a big hit. Um, you know, he didn't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, but yeah, this some of this stuff splashes on you, and you take a point of damage Ouch. as it like lands on you. And you know, obviously, it doesn't hurt because you're an android. But you guys see like part of your arm and maybe a little bit on your face like starts to eat away uh, as you get hit by this. Um, I start to bleed that white blood those androids have. Oh man, sorry, dude. But a uh, reminder for all of us not to shoot it too close. Yeah, you guys got to get out of here. Get somewhere safe. So, um, yeah. let me just see. I believe the damage is ongoing until it burns out. Oh, no. Where's the... Okay, a victim who suffers damage from the initial splash suffers another attack each round at the start of the round, just like for fire. However, the number of base dice rolled for the attack is halved at the start of each round as the acid is slowly used up. Uh, so it gets weaker and weaker. Uh, if at any point it fails to inflict damage, it is burnt out automatically. Okay. So, you are hit. You are burning. But, um, it, uh, you know, it'll go out, uh, eventually. Um, so, that was initiative, uh, one. Initiative two. So that's me and Hirsch on, uh, up on three? Yes. You just see do his scramble thing and get out of there? Oh, he's he's uh yeah he's he trying got, you got the elevated thing so he's he's trying to um i'm gonna try and calm myself down and i'm just gonna like try and get back into uh you know i'm gonna try and turn i'm gonna take a deep breath try and like shut up the fucking lizard brain that's telling me to piss my pants and run and i'm gonna try and analyze this thing again now that it's like you know it's a different alien so i'm gonna roll this analytics can you use analyze in a situation like this? What does it say? It's uh, it, I just have to take a full turn. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, that's a uh, that's a fail. <laughs> panic. Oh god, oh. you're rolling too many panic dice. No, <laughs> there's only something... six panic dice. Yes. Well, there's a six. Well, well, is there is there a negative to the rest of the party when you fail one of these rolls? Everybody takes a panic within short of me. Oh my god. Um, so you're still in the zone, so it'll just, it'll it'd be you and, and Hirsch. Oh, poor Hirsch. Well, it increases his again, so, um... My panic level goes to nine. Nine is drop item. Didn't you have that last I, I, turn? I pick up the pistol and drop it again. Didn't, didn't you have that last turn, right? Yeah. Okay, so then it goes up to ten, you freeze. Coo, coo. I'm trying to buy you time, you mofos. Um, and Hirsch, uh, his goes up, so he's about to scramble uh, for cover, and uh, he gets just scream. You scream your lungs out for one round, losing your next slow action. Your stress level is decreased by one, but every friendly character who hears your scream <laughs> must make an immediate panic test. Man. Oh my God. All right. So this is. Is that everyone or? Oh yeah, you're all right oh. there. You can hear him. <laughs> all right. Uh. Well. Oh. Nine. Great. This is drop dropping. item. I got actually, a four. Nice. Four, you're fine. How are you so not stressed? I'm at eight stress. I rolled a one and got a fucking nine. Well, I got lucky. I 
missed the last two. Initiative four. I believe that's the android. Android. Uh, android only has one choice, but to scream, get the fuck out of here. And, it's uh, all falling apart around you, Holroyd. Uh, People are gonna, screaming. Yeah. There's guns on the floor. It's not good. Man, yeah. this is a short movie. <laughs> Roll. Uh... It's the shortest fucking alien movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Everyone's dead. We're going two rooms. Uh, I get one success on my attack. Are you? You're attacking it? Yeah, I got to. Uh, okay. Luckily, Chris, I go from freeze to seek cover. His, I panicked again. Oh, you panicked again? Well, yeah, because I had to take a fucking okay. test. And I had okay. eight panic. All right, um, Brian, once again, you hit this thing, and uh, it you don't even, like, knock it to the side, like, this yeah. time. You hit it, and, like, part of the uh, part of the nozzle, like, bends a little bit on the flamethrower. Yeah. You hit it so hard. And, uh, yeah, well, you on the plus side, you've got its attention. I'm trying to buy guess some time. It, it does the same thing, ready to kill, so it's going to uh, try to... I'm going to do my whatever that I have to declare ahead of time. I forget what it's called. The block? Counterattack and block or whatever, yeah. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> oh, I rolled that ahead of time? Yeah, go ahead and roll. You roll your close combat now. Two successes. You you keep it uh, at bay this time. It it does successfully grab you, but uh, once again, you uh you knock it back and um, it uh, it uh, does not um, does not latch on to you. Uh, initiative six. Uh, well, I will pick up my gun okay. that I just dropped, okay. and then can I do like a command to like say, hey everyone, get to the door. Stop fighting this thing and run. Is that like um, a thing I can do? I believe when you make a command, it's only to one individual. Okay. Well, I'll just shout that then. <laughs> okay. And uh, I will continue to hold the door, and with uh, hold the gun in my hand and not build a shooter because my hand's shaking too much. That now would be a perfect time to say something like, "Civilians, we are leaving." Yeah, we're trying to get behind the door. Now you, you can with the alien. You can use your command action to try to break one of your teammates out of panic. Oh, go. then yes, I will do that. Um, um, if you use the command skill, which I have um, a lot of. Yeah, I believe you're the best at it in the party. Um, okay, well, there's a lot of dice being rolled there. Command. Uh, when another character oh, makes a panic sick, roll and yeah. lose control, you can make a command roll and return them to their senses. Well, I I got a success, but I rolled a one on the stress die. Or one uh, on the stress die. Uh-oh. So that negates all the successes when that happens? Yes, and you gain a stress, and you must make a panic roll. <laughs> Do I, what happens first? Gaining the stress or the panic roll? You gain the stress first, so you add the one you gained to the new roll. So I that's going to be nine, because I have four stress right now. No, I, I have five stress. Sorry, that's a, that's a ten. 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 Freeze. Right. Uh, your stress level and the stress of all friendly in short range of you, uh, which is um, same zone. Uh, so that would be you and... Um, Tyler, you're in the hallway with him, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So you gain a point of stress. Or is that Will? Hell yeah! No, uh, Will, Will I'm, got I'm some... I'm yellow. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. That was initiative six. Initiative seven. Back Creature. to the monster, right? Yes. I think he's just going to try to pick you up again. He is determined to fucking bite you in the face. Um, so make another... Make another close combat roll. All right, it does slightly better this time. Uh, what you got there, Android? I've only got, I've only got one trick. I just gotta. I, mean, I literally can't do anything else, can I? Well, you you have to make an opposed roll against this, trying to pick you up again. So, are you currently grappled by it? That was going on. No, it, it keeps trying to grab him, and he keeps uh, he keeps breaking free. So I have, to, I have to do. Fuck away. I'm trying to let you guys run away so it doesn't eat you. We're trying to help you. We're all trying to get away. <laughs> run away. Get so behind rolled, the door. I rolled one success. Okay, it rolls two. Oh, so, oh my god. 
But when when does my acid thing happen? Start of the round. Okay. Uh, and you got hit by it this round, right? Yeah, because Tyler, Tyler shot at this round, so yeah. Yeah. start over the next round. Um, okay, so it uh, it grabs you and picks you up, um, mm -hmm. and uh, unless you break free, it is uh, it's gonna try to do something more next turn to you. Okay. So, um, so it like... finally grabs you, and you see um, Holroyd tries to break free again, and this time the uh, creature seems ready for what he tries to do to break free, and. Uh, Picks him up, basically one hand on each uh, like uh, upper arm, and lifts him up and pulls him close towards his uh, head. He's gonna do that little mouth thing with me. You, yeah, you see his lower jaw opens, and you see a second mouth about to come out from inside, yeah, and it, it is, is just disturbing as fuck. Take um, pain out. Yeah. And it is. Uh, we really need you to stop fighting it, and you're on Back to initiative one. You, I'm I'm here so that you guys can get out of there. But yep. you're part and of the group. We're all the, getting out. The bottom yeah, is here. One. The bottom is one. Hirsch. We have to get Hirsch out of That's there. me. I, I'm I'm running to the door. If he wants to sacrifice himself, I'm running to the door, and we'll let yeah. him miraculously come yes. back in the third half. Okay, you're, you're, you won't see him. You're you're in the hallway already. So. Eh. Well, but are we running? But I'm running behind the bulkhead doors that McWhir ran towards. Grab somebody and go. Go. So okay. I am moving as far as I can move towards this direction. Are you, are you getting on the ladder? Yes. Are you going down the ladder? Uh, is Mech were down the ladder? No. He, Matt, he, did you go down? No, I have been at the door, at the door with a button waiting for you guys to get through it so I can close no, it. Uh, no, I'm right. waiting at the door. I'm waiting at the door as well in case I need a cover. Okay. Uh, where yeah. are you right now, Matt? Matt, Matt, is, Matt they're, and Tyler they're both here. Both, they're both they're on, both on top of each other. Okay. They're on opposite. I will wait. I will. I will train my gun. Uh, you know, I'll take a look behind Matt. You can. Go. You can take the aim action with your other action if you'd like. Yeah, I will take the aim action. Okay. All right. Initiative two. All right. So finally, both myself and Hirsch have seek cover. So I'm gonna go here. And Hirsch is free because the alien's on. Uh, how no, Hirsch, Hirsch got bumped up to the scream. And so, made he can, panic. so he can act, right? Um, no, he, he loses his next slow action. He has, a, he has a, well, he has a fast action. Just grab it. So he can just sprint with a fast action? Yeah, I mean, he he's, yeah, he, he runs yeah. In, into the hall and past uh, Hallroyd. Yeah, and, so he, uh, he can sprint. He needs to, the, uh, the next zone. hold on, he's got to make a retreat, though, because he's got to run past the alien. Uh, so All right. Mobility roll. This is mobility. Ew. And uh, he's got a bunch of stress at this point. Actually, no, he's just went down a little bit. Um, okay, so he does not pass his mobility test, so the alien gets to make a free attack on him. All right, so the alien, uh, it strikes out with its tail. And it hits him. And he takes a point of damage. Um... 